All right. It says we I got, got a notification. It says you're live. Okay. I'm trying to see if I can find a window where we can see the chat and stuff. And I might need to just pull up the uh, pull up on my phone or something. See if I can find a window where we can see the chat and stuff. Uh oh, you gotta mute that. Whatever that is, you gotta yeah. mute it. Or on the phone or something. See if I can find a window where we can see the chat. Oh, you gotta mute that. Whatever that is, you gotta yeah. mute it. I'm gonna pull it up on my phone. Uh, if you have a second window open that has audio on, you need to shut that off. Yeah, I do. I'm gonna pull it up on my phone. Uh, if you have a second window open that has audio on, you need to shut that off. Okay, I do. I'm gonna pull it up on my phone. Uh, we'll, be, uh, we'll be starting in a minute. We're just working out an audio issue. I'll be right back. Okay. You got your audio sorted, Rick? Yeah, I got that other window closed. Okay, cool. No, I didn't close it. I just turned the audio off. It's a split screen so I can follow the chat, but I don't know if I'm going to have the ability to participate in chat. So I think we should be good. It's going to open a couple windows in this greenhouse because it's getting warm. That's a sweet studio you have. <laughs> All right. I got a 150-foot Ethernet cable so I could uh, live stream out here. That's awesome, Greg. All right. You big live streamer. I was thinking about setting up a hammock and sleeping out here one night. Heck yeah. I can't get to that one. All right. That's good enough. What do we got? We got nine people watching. Hello, nine people. Rack, what do you want to do today? Uh, I thought we'd just hang out and chat for a little while, Greg. Oh, wait. Well, what are we going to do with these trees? Oh, let's build a bonsai. <laughs> Uh, that sounds I've great. I'm trying to do this on a live stream. Uh, I think ever since you sort of walked me through it um, on a Google uh, Google chat, uh, I've wanted to do this. So it's cool. Um, I'm glad to be able to do it. I want to show you guys. Let me show you guys uh, the three that I've already created. Um, this one was my first. Nice. I made that with a uh, rack on a stream. Rack, I'm seeing a little bit of like yellowing on some of the uh, on some of the the leaves. Does that mean I need to water it more often? Maybe the opposite. Maybe you need to water it a little less if the leaves are turning a little yellow. Okay. Don't let it dry completely out, but maybe add a day to your watering schedule and see what happens. Okay. Cool. Uh, so that's the first one. That was pretty amazing for your first attempt, by the way, Greg. Yeah, I liked it. I, I thought it was pretty good. Um, this is the one I, I featured in a, a video uh, a couple weeks back where we had you instructing us as we built it. Uh, I thought it turned out really cool. It's got these like two like yin-yang sweeping yeah. branches going in opposite directions. A very interesting piece, and it's hard to imagine that that's the – exact same material as the first one you did yeah yeah it's just 
it's crazy how different um, you know each tree is. By the way, in chat, if if everyone can uh, just tell us how the the audio and the video quality looks, that would be helpful. And then this is one I did. Uh, I'm not sure it's 100% done yet, but I did this one uh, just in my spare time because I felt like, uh, you know, I needed something relaxing to do. And so I built this one right here. I like that one, Greg. And yeah, uh, it's you know cool. you're, done. you're gonna keep working on them forever. I know, right? Like I was, I was afraid to chop too many uh, branches off this one because mm -hmm. I wasn't exactly sure what direction I wanted it to go in. So I just left all of them knowing that I can cut one off later or maybe train right. a branch into a different direction. Yes, and at but, this point, Greg, it's all about your preference. And as your experience and intake of Banja uh, <laughs> visions grow, you're gonna, your preference is gonna change and grow. Yeah, yeah, so we're getting a couple questions. Uh, it says audio and video, good, awesome. Um, Julio Sanchez says, do you need a specific type of soil for growing them? Yes and no. Um, it's a plant. It's a tree. So that tree was uh, purchased from a DIY store, I believe, to be planted in your yard as a shrub. Mm -hmm. So it'll it'll grow in any field soil. But for the purpose of growing a tree in a pot, it's better if you use a very well-drained soil. Yeah. And it's the source bonsai soil or bonsai soil. Bonsai is correct. The two words, bone and sai, meaning potted plant. But bonsai is, is common American vernacular. Either is fine. Right. Um, there, it's the source of, of, a, of an instant argument when you talk about bonsai <laughs> oil mixtures. So I like to use some, some sort of a substrate um, that includes a very light and um, porous filler to add air. Okay. Yep. Pumice, lava rock, maybe perlite, and things that are readily available. Also, uh, so inor inorganic, but adds air, right? Correct. Gets air and oxygen around those roots that have just been trimmed and drains quickly. So then I add an inert, tiny gravel chip. I like the granite. You can buy that at the tractor stores as chicken grit. Yep. And sand. I've got, I've got a bag of that right here we can show real quick. You can add a coarse sand in there. Now, all of those are um, inert, inorganic, not really inert, I don't guess. Yes. And then I guess a, a third very popular item in the substrate is a fired clay, such okay. as kitty litter, or in Japan, they have the very awesome and very expensive Akadama. It's a volcanic fired clay. And um, that maintains a little moisture, keeps a little air, doesn't pack tight. Yeah. You can add some coarse sand. But what I like to do in our beginner trees, Greg, is to add some organic material. Yeah. Usually uh, peat moss, maybe um a very fine pine chip potting soil if you have to just to hold the the moisture a little bit better while you're getting used to treating your and you just mentioned hey my i noticed my leaf is turning yellow i guarantee if you would have put that tree in the yard as a shrub you would have never noticed a leaf turning yellow yeah so you're not taking these trees for granted anymore they're like more like pets right you're you're right. well like, i mean i i built it like I, you know i want to i want to care for it Exactly. So, so anyway, there's a quick rundown of some ingredients involved in bones okay. on soil. But the thing is, the tree will grow in dirt. You want, if you're going to put it in a pot, you want it well drained. Yeah. Well drained. And that means you got to keep an eye on that watering. You can't let it dry out. And with, with a typical plant that you're just trying to grow as fast as possible, you want as much, as many organics in that soil, as much fertilizer in that soil as possible, right? So That's the correct. roots grow, the plant grows. But with a, a bonsai, you're trying to actually slow that growth down, right? So uh, a lot of yes, inorganic yes and no. oil. But you want to be able to control the energy so it goes right. where you want it to. You'd rather it be very fast, but you can't have your cake and eat it too. Right. Okay. So you're, you're wanting to direct that energy that used to be long branches. You wanted to go into the trunk to make that wide, broad yeah. base trunk to make that tree look ancient. Right. So if you're if you're feeding it everything it needs to grow really fast, what's gonna happen is you're gonna get a lot of leaf growth and it's gonna go like long and spindly instead of Maybe. growing at the trunk at the base. That's exactly right, Greg. Okay. So you let it, you give it some, the sun that the plant requires, let the material be the guide and let it take that 
photosynthetic energy, give it to the roots, let the roots go down there and gather nutrients from the yep. soil. And that's where you add your fertilizers. Purists would say the organic fertilizers are the only way to go. Never add any um, salts and, and artificial fertilizers. Right. So another argument. You, okay. if yeah, I'm like the bonsai you, masters, they, they use like almost completely inorganic soil and then they control the fertilization at the top, at the top of the soil, right? Exactly. As you water over it. Yeah. But I'll tell you, if you're going to have outdoor plants, these junipers are solid outdoor plants. They're okay in the greenhouse, I guess. Yeah. But that organic fertilization is going to attract critters. You're going to have yeah. coons and possums rooting through if you're here in the east rooting yep. through your bonsai trees and that's not cool man right but so if i was to you to make it to make it easy and beginner friendly that's awesome yeah yeah uh, i use like a a, a regular water-based over-the-counter fertilizer sometimes at half strength okay okay so like a vid grow or something those vid grow singles just use it at half strength okay and on a new tree i wouldn't use it for a month right you let that thing cover its wounds and then start using it, but don't do it right away. Nice. All right, I'm going to put this one down uh, so we can see all, all three that we have previously done. And now today on this live stream, as we hang out together, we're going to make uh, another one together. So you can walk us through all of the, the steps on how to turn this garden stock into a beautiful bonsai tree. Yeah, and I think I have all the supplies I need now. It's got merit on its own, right? Look at that. That's a good-looking tree already. Yeah, right? Like, it's got some uh, some sort of, like, overhanging branches, although a lot of it is new growth. Um, it's sort of, like, you know, bushy on the top. But when when I went to the store to look for these, what I looked for was, uh, well, you can't, you can't see everything, right, because right. it's so dense right now. But what I looked for is uh, a lot of character that is already forming in like a triangular shape, right? Because we know that's what we're going to go for in the end. Right. Nailed it, buddy. I mean, yeah. if you were to boil bonsai down into a simple um, a visual explanation, it would be um, isosceles triangles. Right. There you go. All right. Now, I'll, I'll give you a tip. When you're looking for nursery stock, see if you can see the trunk of the tree. Yeah. It's and, kind of tough. It's like you got to go yeah, looking for it. If, if these sticker plants are really tough too, but look at the trunk. And, and one larger trunk is sometimes better than three smaller trunks. Unless right. you take it home and make three trees, which is pretty cool too. Right. And then the second tip is look for a little height. If, yeah. the, if the container plant is humped over, then probably there's an upward growing branch that's bending back down that will add a lot of character to your bones eye. Yep. Other than that, it's a crapshoot. You don't know what bonsai lives in there until you discover it. All right. The goldfish in the chat says, happy Sunday, everyone. Happy Sunday. We're just going to hang out here for, I don't know, an hour or so, whatever it takes. I'm not going to be in a rush to uh, do the five easy steps, right, Greg? Yeah. To turn this, this nursery stock into a beautiful bonsai. And um, I actually, I just remembered, I forgot. Um, some wire when when we get to the potting step i forgot some wire i'm gonna go inside real quick and get that while i'm doing that rack why don't you explain um where to go and and what to look for uh in terms of species when when you're hunting for nursery stock I'll and i'll be right back that's awesome greg thanks guys for showing up i want to put my glasses on so i can see who's in chat all right all right hello so um I've done dozens of bonsai workshops for beginners, and I've found, hands down, the best material to work with is this juniper. And it's actually, I don't know if you're going to be able to read that. It's a, it's sold as a dwarf garden juniper. I bought this one at Lowe's. And the scientific name is Juniperus procumbens, and then the variety is Nana. So what makes it great for bonsai are these leaves are tiny. So it gives you a scale right away that the tree is larger than the leaf. The, the way the plant grows, 
makes it awesome to do these five easy steps to create your first bonsai. And then if you're like me, you're hooked and you want to learn more and more. And then there are formal styles of bonsai. There are different approaches to bonsai. The one approach we're going to use today is a workshop approach. And what that means is actually we're going to overwork the tree. We're going to have a tree when we're done. A gardening technique would be much slower. We might just kind of preen and, and primp on our plants a little at a time. But in a workshop tree, we want to take uh, garden stock and we want to turn it into a bonsai. So we're going to do the styling complete. We're going to do the repotting complete. And when we're finished, we're going to have a bonsai. It's not the only way to do uh, uh, bonsai gardening. However, in my uh, hundreds of these plants I've done, hundreds, this is the best portal for a beginner to discover bonsai. So I hope you enjoy it. And don't be afraid to try this. I promise, uh, look at my video on the River Life YouTube channel, Five Easy Steps. That's exactly what it is. Anybody can do it. I wanted to learn this stuff so bad that I sold things and saved to take very expensive lessons. And then I figured out a way to <laughs> basically give bones out to the people. This plant retail $8.98. Um, oh, that's a steal. Up here, up here, they're a little bit more expensive. Um, the one, the one that I, could, the only one I could find was at Lowe's, and GoFish says they're at Lowe's. Um, this is the Monovria brand uh, dwarf Japanese garden juniper, the Nana, and uh, fourteen ninety eight for this one. Okay, we're still under twenty bucks, and if you've got a pair of kitchen scissors laying around, you're good mm -hmm. to go. Yep, and um, you can get these uh, plastic training pots. Um, on Amazon, you can get like an eight pack and they only cost a couple bucks a piece. Now, let me now on that, they're not required. Um, yeah, you've got an old terracotta pot, they have the large hole in the bottom. Remember, we talked about our soil being well drained. As long as you have a pot with a large enough drainage hole to get the water out of there, you're in good shape. Yeah, so you, could, you could recycle even the nursery pot and just cut it down to make it uh, thinner. Yep. Not have to buy a pot, but like Greg said, if you want an actual bonsai pot, eBay, Amazon, how much, Greg? I think they're, they're only a couple bucks a piece. Okay. You're yeah, still not 20 bad. bucks. You got a bone. You're in the bonsai world for 20 bucks. I think, gosh, back in the very early 2000s, my first bonsai course was $400. <laughs> yeah. So you, you're, get, you're getting that for free here, guys. Yeah. So uh, and I'm not complaining. Uh, it was worth it. It's fine art. And I had a yeah. very qualified instructor with a beautiful studio. But I, a lot of people I knew couldn't come to bonsai class with me. You know, they didn't they didn't want to sell their stuff to trade it for a bonsai lesson. Right. OK, so we know what we have to go look for and, and where to go find it. Um, if your local stores do not carry this, if it's not in stock, you can always ask them to special order it. So there's no reason why you sh you can't find it or, or order it. I'm going to put on a pair of these nitrile gloves. Okay. They're not necessary, but they this these leaves are a little bit stiff. They'll sometimes stick. And I'm a wimp. And this <laughs> this thin glove takes care of it. I mean, it right. just the stick away. Do we want to talk about our uh, tools real quick before we get started? Sure. Oh yeah, sure. Look at you. Heavenly days. <laughs> it didn't take long. All I had to do was build my first bonsai, and I was I was hooked. And I wanted to go out and spend the extra money to get the the proper tools so that uh, I could I could do this uh, properly. But you're I right. You can. Start everybody it. heard the cat. There was a warning. This is addictive. It is. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to walk through what's in my toolkit <coughs> real quick, and then you can walk through what's in your toolkit. Does that sound good? Sure. All right. Uh, first up, I've got two different uh, bonsai tools. These are like cutter tools. Um, one is the concave cutter, which I think is this one, right? Nope. No? This one? Yep. All right. This is the concave cutter, and then what's this one? Um, that's a root cutter. Root cutter. Okay, so I got I got a I think it was a two pack uh, on on Amazon, and these seemed like they were the most important tools of the 
the ones that you could go out and buy. And and this is like the the cheaper end yeah. uh, of the tools. And I think they're like, I don't know, less than 10 bucks uh, a piece, something like that. Really? Like bucks for the set. Yeah, that concave cutter, you, you'll find it is your first tool. Yeah, this one here. You buy a tool, you buy the concave cutter. Yeah, and this one's really useful for if you've got like a, a, a medium to large branch that you want to cut really close. Um, that's that's the tool to use right there. I haven't used the root cutter yet, but maybe we'll use that today. Uh, okay, what else do I have? Uh, for other cutting tools, I got two more cutting tools. I just got a regular pair of scissors, like a sharp-ish pair of scissors. And then I have a pair of fine snips. And these are really good for uh, all of the, the small growth, uh, the fine pruning stuff. Um, I've got a bunch of chopsticks for working our gravel. Yeah, and the other thing, they're handy. Yeah, I've got these beautiful bamboo scoops from Rack himself sent these to me. Thank you very much. Wild collected bamboo that I hand fired. All right, I love these. Not so I around. Glad you one tucked away in this kit because it fits. And then I've got a, a medium size one and a large size one as well. I haven't made a, a bonsai yet large enough to use the large scoop, but. Won't be long. I know. Uh, and then two other things I have, I just have a, a simple brush to brush stuff out, whether it's the, the top of the soil or cleaning off all the little bits that have been uh, pruned. And then I've got a uh, cut paste, which I also got on Amazon, which uh, I've used once so far. And I must say, I like it. I think it's a, a really smart thing to do to make sure after you make a big cut in your tree that that's gonna heal correctly and not get uh, infected or uh, start to rot. That's another source of an argument, but I use it every time. Okay. So that's my kit. That's awesome. What do you got in your kit, Rack? I don't know. Let's take a look. And again, you can start with just a simple pair of scissors. Like that's that's really all you need to get started. Fact. That's a fact. <laughs> what do you got? I got, uh, this is probably my... Uh, second full set of tools the first was much like your student grade nothing wrong with them these are a little um they cost more they're stainless steel mm. a little smoother to operate got the concave cutter yep that's um, nice. greg what this does is the the sharpened plier it's great for flush cuts mm. you want to cut that branch off close to the to the limb and what it does is when you, when this sharpened plier grabs the material that's cutting, it pulls it in, so it makes a concave cut yeah. into the wood. And what that does is allow for better covering. So instead of a bulging scar, you have more of a flush scar. That's right. why the concave cutter is important. And I use it for lots of things, but I don't abuse it. If I'm working with roots in the soil, I yeah. don't dull the blade with that soil. I've got ult ultimately with the concave cutter, if you if you make a flush enough cut, when that bark reheals over it, it's gonna look like there was never a limb there to begin with, and that's sort of what we're going for. Yeah. Eventually that, that will happen, but we're definitely trying to reduce the blemish from right. removing a limb. So I've right. got this bones I shear here. Okay. Has, um, relatively long handled, very stout, short snips so i use these depending on how large the cut i'm going to make how big is the limb so like chefs have knives bonsai artists have shears all right. different sizes and types so that's like the the more expensive version of like a pair of kitchen scissors yeah and you can see the japanese influence in the style yep and you can like see big, the big, uh, handles yeah lightweight kind of heavy yeah so, and then here's my uh, stump cutter, and it's kind of contoured, a little ergonomic, because okay. sometimes the stumps are large, you need to grind on them, you know. Yeah. This is uh, important later. This is a wire cutter. Okay. All right. Now, you may, there are wire cutters at every hardware store you've ever been to. Yeah, I've got a pair here. 
Just like really, and guess there. what they do? They do the same thing this does. They cut wire. But if you look at that blunt tip, there's the difference. So what that allows me to do after I've wired a branch and I need to remove it, and you do have to remove wire on a branch. You don't want the branch to consume it. Mm. This blunt end allows you to cut the wire off of uh, the branch without scarring the branch. Whereas a short tip, hard. you got to be real careful. Okay. That's the difference. Tip. Okay, and then this is just another big tap. Oh. Yeah, that's monster. You need some muscle, yeah. <laughs> then, so I've got these um, tweezers, okay? You can reach in between things that are delicate and grab debris and whatever. And then this is like a little spatula. Okay. It's good for tamping down the soil after you've potted the plant. And also, it's got kind of a semi-sharpened edge. Yeah. It's good for going around a the, the pot of a plant and when it's time for repotting okay. when it's time for repotting greg you'll find that the roots have completely consumed the container if you're watering right. and you're fertilizing so they do adhere to any any surface so it's good to break them loose before you try to get that tree out and repotting is like a, a once yearly activity right no more than that and and typically um you can go longer like with these yeah. junipers we're doing that they people say three to five years oh wow okay but if my juniper if my workshop juniper has made it for a year a growing season and a dormant season then i like to repot it and the reason is we're in a training pot yeah and our goal is to get into a thinner and smaller bonsai pot to make the tree look older and the trunk larger right so after a year, I like to remove some more of the roots and get it into a smaller pot. So when, when you're talking about training pots, so this is a training pot. It's just a plastic pot, really low cost. And this might look like it's uh, not very tall, but in, in the world of bonsai, this is actually a training pot. It's, it's really tall compared to what we want to actually get it down to, right? Exactly. Okay. Yeah, and inexpensive. So... If you're going to do a formal show of your bonsai, the, the pots can cost more than the trees. Wow. Yeah. So I was at a local show, um, a small show, and uh, I saw a small pot. Um, it was round, maybe three-inch diameter. That was, it was hand-thrown and fired by a Japanese man that had been, his, his dad started a, a, a pottery business in Japan. Yeah. He took over the business recently. Um, I guess in the last decade gave the business to his son and he had passed away and this pot was $150. Wow. It was about $50 an inch. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. And, 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 and people were in line to see it and it sold quickly. Oh, um, now, I actually, years and years ago, I was uh, lucky enough to go to, um, I think it's the like the Austin Garden Show, or uh, I, I forget exactly what it's called, but it's like the entire convention center in Boston, and they had a room devoted to uh, bonsai, and they had some really big, really impressive pieces there, and, and, and that, that might have been what originally sparked my interest, was going to see that um but i've been in you know like apartments and um you know like i just i haven't had like the outdoor space until until this greenhouse has been built right and now i'm in a house where like i feel like i can you know take care of you know a, a bonsai for like a, a longer longer term you know we'll find out yeah um the, the other thing the other thing that's interesting is near me there's a place called uh, new england bonsai which I didn't realize. I've been to it. It's cool. Uh, I didn't realize how big of a deal it is. It's one of the the biggest bonsai places in the U.S. and they ship a lot of bonsais. So if you ever visit Rack, we'll have to uh, go on a little trip there. You mean when I visit? Yeah. Are they they're open in the winter, right? When I come up for ice fishing? I think so. I don't know. I mean, I'd have to check. I'd have to check what the hours are. Uh, but I think they're open year round. Yeah. Cool. It's um, just like greenhouse after greenhouse after greenhouse. There's a greenhouse that's completely full of pots for sale. Right. Yep. Crazy. Well, welcome aboard to the crazy ride of Bonsai, Greg. I know you're going to enjoy it, and I really appreciate you taking the time to share it with your yeah. viewers. So is that is that it for your kit? Everything? Yeah, that was that. That's all that I brought. Now, 
Um, that's the roll. The kit's actually a box. You don't have a box yet, Greg? A box? You're going to have to have a bonsai toolbox. Oh. Yeah. And it's no, got. No, I just, I just have like a roll up thing. Yeah. Well, you got to start somewhere. Okay. <laughs> you know, well, I, as my as my collection grows, I'm sure I there will. You go. The mechanic yeah. only uses one wrench at a time, right? Right. Yeah. Well, he's, he's got a three toolbox. Same thing. Place says, "Hey, hey, hello, good morning, happy Sunday." Um, all right. So, without further ado, we've been talking about bonsai for a little bit. We've walked through the tools. We've walked through the uh, the nursery stock here. You want to start uh, instructing us on how to make this bonsai? Yeah. I'll let you talk through it. I'll ask a whole bunch of questions, and yeah. you can just build these bonsais together. Sure, and you got your eye on the chat, so yep. questions are welcome, right, as we go? Yep, always. So, so, hey, guys, watch this as if you might try it. Like yeah. afterwards, you may go to the store and buy your first little tree to try to work on. Michael Eugenio's here. Hey, Michael. How's it okay, going? let's get started. Yeah, we're going to have to uh, maybe do this uh, during the aquatic experience. I think that would be cool. Uh, I hope so. That could yeah. be really fun. All, All right. First, first step, five easy steps. We're going to turn this tree into a bonsai. Uh, bonsais are dwarf trees. They're smaller. This thing's all over the place. So is yours. We're going to make the branches shorter. So we go to the end of the branch, and we cut a little bit of that branch off. Can we start with the pot? Oh, that's right. Preparation. Before we get right. into the five easy steps, let's prepare the pot. That'll just make it easier for everybody. So, Greg, um, you've got a better camera angle there. I'm going to go ahead and work on mine. I'll show it when I'm done. We're okay. going to cut the, the rim off down to the soil level. So we're taking our scissors, and we're taking this plastic uh, nursery pot, and we're just going to slide the pair of scissors in the side and cut this down um, about an inch what is it, like an inch below the soil level? No, just right at soil level is good. Right at soil level? Yeah. And then we're just going to cut around the the lip until we've exposed, um, like, the, the top of the, the soil all the way around this pot. So this is just going to help us to better uh, visualize the... Uh, yeah, so you cut the ring off. Three. Yeah, mine's being a little bit more stubborn. I don't know. Maybe these scissors are getting dull from cutting cutting bonsais. You got that high end pot. It's it's tough to deal with. Yeah, this this is like, you know, I think I think you're right. Like I I this brand is is like more expensive than I think the the regular nursery stuff is. It's like the the higher end, but it's the only one that they had. So now I've got a refuse box beside me over here. So if you see me move my plant, I'm just kind of making, shaking things out in the box, keep them in one place. Okay. I'm just going to make a total mess all over the floor because I'm outside That's of the, the greenhouse. Place. I highly recommend making a mess on the floor. <laughs> I am the king of making a mess. Me too. Right. So we've got yeah. our the top of the plastic pot cut off here. Um, and I'm looking at, uh, I saw what was presented on the screen, Greg. That was perfect. Okay, now we're just going to second step and last step of preparation. We're just going to knock all the debris off the top of the soil. Should come off easily now that our lid's been lowered. Okay, and I'm what I'm going to use for that is just a chopstick here, and I'm going to go in on the side and just uh, gently loosen anything that's on the top of the soil. Uh, it could be debris. It could be old uh, branches. It could be just loose soil at the top uh anything anything that's loose and is just going to make a mess and get in the way later we might as well get rid of it now right and sort i'm talking every time i do this lots of those uh, slow release fertilizer uh balls oh right so yeah. be careful around pets and children yep luckily i'm just out in the greenhouse you're right though i can see one right here there's a little green crystal so this is also going to uh, allow us to see a little bit more of the trunk of the tree once we get around to that part, right? Yeah, it's like your first good look at the trunk. It's an aha moment. Yeah. I don't know. Mine's mine's so dense I still can't see the trunk, but at least at least all that that stuff is off the top, so it it looks good. Won't make up as much of a mess later. 
Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of that slow release fertilizer on the top. All right. Okay, that's a very simple preparation, but very important. Thanks for catching that, Greg. Good catch. Yeah. Now we're going to get into the five easy steps, starting with shortening the branch. Now, what I like to do on this step is to find um, where the new growth, which is a green branch, turns brown, which represents last year's or older growth. So right there where the brown turns green, I won't yeah. put that much off. Yeah, and I've, I, I've, I've got an example here, too. You can see the green here, yes. and then it turns brown right there. there so even go. though this is like a nice long branch, and we we want nice long branches, um, you, you, you need to cut this off, because if you don't, it's not going to look like an old tree, right? Right. It's going to look like a shrub. Right. So it's, it's tempting to leave it long, but you've got to cut them. And this is the first step. And it's going to be aggressive. So the idea here is to go all the way around the tree. Lather, rinse, repeat. Anything that's green, you cut it off. And, and you cut it right where it turns brown, right? Yes. And this is, this is to help you remember, this is the five easy steps to your first bonsai. And it's not a hard and fast rule. It's a good method to end up with the bonsai as you're learning. Yeah. And it's, uh, again, it is the uh, lather, rinse, repeat, and we're removing material. We're not putting material back on. We're removing material. Right. So as we get deeper into the steps, if you find some material that you missed in one of the previous steps, go ahead and remove it. And that right. will happen. that's important to note, too, because as we start, um, you're not going to catch everything. But as we continue on, you can see more and more into the tree. So you're going to catch more of those things you missed. So you just you continuously go back to the other steps and uh, and continue to cut. OK. So the uh, the green growth rack that that represents what last year's growth, like yes. new growth. That's new growth that were probably uh, buds last year. I've got granddaddy long legs all over my uh, plant. I hope I can save those, get them back outside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, and my plants I know are coming from a warm climate, so they don't have growing seasons like we do. You know, they grow year round. Right. They import them from Southern Florida. So we're speaking of last year's growth as if we're on our more temperate growth cycle. Right. Right. So already what I notice is this tree that used to be like long and spindly is now a little bit more compact. Right? Yes. Okay. You're, re you're redirecting energy. Right. Uh, all of that energy is going out there to the new growth. So you're telling the energy, okay, let's save some for the inner tree. Let's stop sending it out. Okay, it's sort, of like a, it's sort of like a defense mechanism, right? Like, yeah, yeah. it's a survival trait. trait. It's and now the tree doesn't have to as much energy as it can where it knows it's safe. <laughs> I said the tree didn't have to survive. We're going to domesticate the tree. We're going to we're going to give it provision. It doesn't have to survive alone anymore. It's not alone. Yeah, you ready for step two? I think so. Yeah, I mean, I might I might catch a few more later, but I think uh, I think we're pretty good. How's chat doing? Did everybody get that? That's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Step one is done, or at least in progress. Shortening. If you guys have, if you guys have any questions as we're going, uh, leave them in chat, and, and we'll answer them. But I, that was a pretty simple step. I liked it. It, it. it was an aggressive step, but it's really necessary in order to, uh, yeah. to continue on. You've really got, a, you've got this, Greg. You've got your head wrapped around it. I'm ready. We're going to now remove what's known as dangling growth. And that is growth growing from the bottom of the branch. So yep. you lift the branch up and see if there's any growth coming from uh, the bottom of it. Sometimes you can run your finger along the bottom of the branch and feel it. And you're going to remove that, that dangling growth. 
Yep. This is a very dramatic step. We're going to start opening up some space. We're going to see the limbs on our tree. And we're going to be adding that age, which is our yep. goal. We want to make the tree look older. And if you look at older trees, they don't have growth on the bottom of the limbs. Right. That survival strategy tells them to grow the growth where it can get sunlight and make photosynthesis. Yep. Okay. So this, this is actually this is actually the first step too, where uh, it's going to take a little while for us to get through this step. But at the end, it's going to really start to open up the, the tree because right now it is so dense. You can't even really visualize what this is going to look like in the end because it's 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 a bush. Right. But by taking off all of this under growth, the, the, the dangling growth, um, it can it can start to open up space between branches. And you can actually start to see more of the like the trunks of the tree as opposed to just like the the green explosion. So this one's gonna take a while, guys. This one's gonna this one it's not it's not necessarily difficult uh, because you just have to look at each branch and like it's not even a decision. You know, it's it's a, like an automatic reaction if it's dangling if it's pointed downwards you just you just cut it off and there's there's almost never a case where you're going to leave leave that growth intact so it's just a matter of like finding it all not to say gotta, that um, self-discovery and self-education that's a wonderful thing but for me, if I would have looked at natural trees and worked on bones, it would have been a long time before I recognized, oh, just take off all the bottom growth. Right, right. So this is this is the five easy steps. This is like boiling it down into the, the simplest, most foolproof method to getting a good result on, on your first attempt, which is huge because at first, I was really anxious about making any cuts. Like I wasn't sure about it. I didn't know what it was going to look like. And so I didn't want to cut something that I couldn't put back. Exactly. But and you can't put it back. Right. <laughs> so so you you do have to be careful, but like following following these rules, these steps, like it it takes a lot of that anxiety and, and like the guesswork out of it because you know that if you yeah. just do this step, you know, cut all this dangling growth, all of a sudden you're going to be able to see more of the tree and you're going to be able to make those important decisions in, in the next step. Yeah. And if you don't like it on your next tree, you don't have to do it. This is just a, a launch pad. Just do it like this. See what you like, what you don't like. Yeah. I like it. I, th I think it's a, an, an extremely helpful, um, process i like i like to follow process as much as this is art like it's good to have some guidelines you know what i mean well much like other visual arts all we're doing is studying composition and and using what eons of art history have taught us about composition yep yep this is this is what uh large trees would do in nature so it's just something that we're uh, emulating here and what I'm doing is I'm just going like one branch at a time and just trying to uh, to take all of that undergrowth off of it and I'm certainly gonna need to go back a couple times and uh, continue to find find all this growth because there's there is a lot of it have you found any um uh, longer branches you missed the first time around? Uh, not yet, but I've already found two. Have you? Yep. Yep. They are all over the place. And this is, this is like the relaxing part, you know, cause it's like, you're just spending time with your tree. You're enjoying yep. the process. I'll say this, don't get in a hurry and, and pick up a plant other than this one for your first try. You yeah. can, you can do it. 
but I don't think you're going to have nearly the result with any other plant. It's worth waiting to get this one. Right. So don't, don't settle for, for anything less than the dwarf Japanese garden juniper, Nana variety. Juniperus Nana, right? Yes. Juniperus procumbens. Procumbens. Nana. Yeah. And I usually have a few of these. If you absolutely can't find one, give me a holler. We'll see if we can work something out. Yep. Now, I did a little research on these, and uh, it looks like a lot of them uh, are farmed in Florida. Yeah. Again, the growing season and not being able to um, shut off the growth, they just, they're like, they're a factory down there for these landscape yeah. shrubs. It's like they're, they're, um, they're supplying like Home Depot and Lowe's and like giant garden factories, garden stores. So they're just cranking these things out like acres and acres and acres of these guys. Yeah, good word, acres. Have you uh, have you ever tried to grow one of these from a seed? Not from a seed, but cuttings. Cuttings. Yeah. Okay. So get some root hormone and uh, a substrate. You can start with sand, go from there. And um, I use a, a hormone root tone or something and then um, stick them in the sand. I think fall is a good time. Let them overwinter, then watch them in spring. Sometimes you can do this with these cuttings we're doing today. We, we may have a root by fall. And is, that, is that what they do with these farms, cuttings? Um, most of them do. They actually have like uh, species trees that they grow for cuttings. So and you can imagine a tree that is uh, 20 years old that has been farmed for cuttings. Yeah. A bonsai guy would like to get his hands on that mother plant. <laughs> right? Because you got one plant you can just get hundreds and hundreds of cuttings from every year. Well, not only that, the plant's been grown in the ground for 20 years, and it's enormous. The trunk is so fat you can't believe it. Yep. Not big and gangly like a, a, a landscape shrub. Yep. And when you find those, they're very expensive. I bet. I bet. Okay, let's go ahead and start into step three and continuing step two as we go. Okay. Because it's gonna, step two is going to keep showing up here and there. Step three is to remove growth uh, in the uh, forks of the branches. Where yeah. a branch becomes two branches, right in that fork is a great place for growth, and it makes your tree look absolutely young. So you have to remove that. Right. So that's like if, if you got two branches here, and you got yeah. like one little piece of growth right in the middle. Um, that's that's what we're looking for. That's what we're trying to remove. Yeah, I'm gonna. I don't know if you can see it or not, but I've got a branch here with a piece of growth going straight up in it. So. We're going yep. to take the growth from between the branch forks. Also in this step, if we see any weak upward growth, if there's a, something growing straight up out of the limb and it's just one weak little branch trying to grow, we're going to get rid of it because weak branches don't grow on the inner limbs. That's right. how old trees gather energy. Right. And my, my uh, tree here is very very dense so it's going to take me a while to get through all this and you like it that way right yeah i mean it it uh it gives you a lot of options you gotta take time you know take time with your tree yep you're gonna know that tree when you're done And this, like, once once we get through this step where it's uh, removing everything from the underside of the branch, that's when, like, it starts to open up. Like, you can start to see, you can start to see underneath this tree now, you know? And when we, when we start clipping the growth that's between the two branches, um, it's going to open this up even more. And now... On this third step, a good place to look is in the crown. A lot of the branching happens at the crown. It happens at the outer limbs too, but make sure you work the crown heavily. Yep.
Yeah, especially that stuff that's like pointed straight up, the weak growth that you talked about. Uh -huh. if, if you've got like a really strong branch and then you've got like a little tiny piece of growth that's just going straight up, that's what you want to remove, that weak growth. Yeah, that's not a natural growth. And what causes that is any limb, this procumbens nana grows up and then spreads, that limb exposed to the sun says, hey, plant, I think we can get some energy if I pop out a, a new limb here. Yeah, it's trying to grow up to get to the sun. But in our case, we sort of, the the branches that we're interested in are the, the thicker, um, woodier branches that are sort of spreading outwards, not upwards. What do we got going in the chat? We need to put Paul on a mission to get them for us in Florida. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, there, there's a, there's, a, there's a few farms in Florida. Um, the one I was looking at was, uh, I think, uh, like uh, northern, like Panhandle, almost a section of Florida. Um, but I'm sure they're all over the place. Central Florida's loaded. Is it? Yeah. All right. Well, that's where that's where Paul is. So, in like the Tampa Bay area, I've been to Paul's. I know. I How was it? Park, man, it's awesome. Michael and I are, are starting to plan a trip. We're gonna we're gonna both fly in one day, and we're gonna make some big things happen. Oh man, I can't wait. It's gonna be fun. We'll film all of it, obviously. It'll be good. That's now, um, as I'm cutting, what I'm noticing is some of the growth that's on the inside. Um, since it was so dense, like the the needles are like a, a lighter green than the ones that are on the outside. That's just because it's not it hasn't been exposed to enough light. Or they could be younger. Younger. Okay. Yeah. A lot of those are going to get clipped away, though, in the in the process here. So by removing these limbs, we're generating negative space, and that's what defines the bone's eye. Yeah, visually. Go fish says, I think even Walmart Garden Center has these. That's interesting. Yeah, occasionally they do. Yeah, I should, I should check that out someday. Oh, Greg, let me tell you what you're in for, buddy. What? When you start eyeballing this nursery stock as a potential bonsai, yeah. you come up with the bonsai circuit when you're in your car. So you go to Lowe's, you go to Home Depot, you go to Walmart, you go to the local nursery, <laughs> and you start finding scores. And then uh, for the good ones. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you know what to look for. You're picking up plants, looking at the trunk, raising the limbs up, and the employees are saying, man, it's a tree. What's up? <laughs> right. And then, yeah, so you keep buying them as you can and, and you want to. And then fall comes and they mark them all down to clearance. And all of a sudden, yeah. I need 10 more. <laughs> that's, that's honestly what got me last year. I just happened to go to Lowe's on the right day at the right time. And they had just marked them all on clearance because it was the fall. And there must have been like a hundred um, of these dwarf uh, Japanese garden junipers. So smaller than this one that I'm working on. But there's like a hundred of them. And they were, I think they were originally like seven or eight bucks. And they were marked down like 75% off. And so they're only like two or three bucks a piece. And I was kicking myself because I only bought three of them. And I let this other lady walk out with the other, like, 95 of them. <laughs> but she she was like, oh, I've got a garden club, and we're going to go plant these. And I was like, oh, that's nice. So I just picked, like, the, the few that, uh, I guess, looked the best. Um, knowing that I wanted to, to, to make them into a, uh, a bonsai, knowing that now I had the greenhouse and I had the space, but uh, if, if I had known what a good deal that was, I would have, like, I would have fought her. Yeah. You had no idea you were going to go back I, I and grab as books. many as I could and run away. <laughs> I bet you recalled that while you're in line to pay $15 for that plant. 
Right? Yeah, exactly. I was like, damn, I could have had like a whole cart full of them for that price. <laughs> now, if you guys can see, uh, as I start to rotate this around, you can see it's starting to open up. As I'm, as I'm looking for that weak growth that's pointed straight up, I know that that's never going to, that's never going to stay there. And then the uh, the little growth in the forks, um, when when you start to trim one piece, it opens up to the point where you can see the next thing that you have to cut. And that's really like how you just sort of like go about it, you know, just like one branch at a time, just sort of like picking through it, checking it out. And as you make a cut, like all of a sudden it becomes that much easier to find your next cut. Good point. Greg, like you mentioned, I talked you through your first tree. Turned out spectacular. And I got to watch you get really into that. Kind of like you are now. Can you <laughs> describe the, to the folks in chat what, what you were feeling when you were discovering that first bone die? Yeah. We, okay. On the chat, uh, someone's saying, how do you get a, a ticker, ticker base? Is that a thicker base? A thicker base, yeah. Um, what does that mean, a thicker base? Are you talking about the a wider trunk? And especially at the at the base where it meets the oh, skull. Yeah, yeah. That's well, just a matter a, of the time, a, right? Yeah, there's the patience. There's no shortcut on thickening the trunk. It's patient. Yeah. And yeah, that's just uh, that's age. Like when, when you're looking at a bonsai, the thicker that trunk is, you know that, that that means that the tree is is actually older. And when you see them on display, you can look online, it's jaw dropping when someone has that big pyramidal shaped trunk on a tree. You know it's yeah. been in that pot for a while. And there there are some bonsai that are like 100 years old, right? Like really oh, old. Easy. There's one on display. Um, they're tough, too. Uh, not only old. There's one on display now in the National Garden, the Smithsonian Garden in Washington, D.C. that came from Japan and was a survivor of Hiroshima. Wow. It was a bonsai in a garden when the bomb was dropped. That's crazy. Yeah, and the family donated it to the national so, so bonsai there's a good example to talk about bonsai have have been used in diplomacy for a long time huh. and the u.s and, and japan have established a lot of respect for each other with the use of bonsai as a gift yes and a, a show of respect when we have japanese dignitaries come to the white house they uh, assign a curator to the bonsai collection to fill the halls with displays of bonsai for the Japanese dignitaries. Interesting. Yeah, I've, I've actually thought of giving these as gifts now that I'm like making so many of them. It's uh, it seems like it's a thoughtful thing, you know. It'd, it'd be like uh, like making a painting and giving it away, you know, as a exactly. gift. Exactly. I would say you will. I've given away many, and the recipients are very appreciative. Yeah. It's something to cherish. And it's one of a kind. It is. It's just cool to know that, like, you know, your hands made something, you know? Yep. And for you and I, Greg, we're what I call just uh, naturalist. We appreciate nature and creation and critters. And getting your hands on some natural material is very fun for us. Just naturally, it draws us. Yeah, absolutely. My tree's starting to open up a little bit from the crown. It's got a lot of good movement. Yeah, mine is too. I've just got a lot of, like, I'm, I'm actually, I'm glad that I started uh, sort of in the middle because it's it's helped me to sort of, like, spread out and, and open up and get to the, uh, the branches. Now, we haven't, Besides shortening the branches in the first step, we haven't cut any of the branches of this tree yet. You want to go ahead and cut some? No, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared, Rack. I'm scared. No, because when you get to that stage, then it matters that you can't put it yeah. back. On. Yeah, not well, that, this back that's, on doesn't really matter. When you start chopping off the branches, that's the part you 
can't rush. Like, I, I feel like you have to really work these branches over and get all of this excess growth out of there um, before we move on to the next step. Because if, it, if there's some details of the tree that are still hiding because you got you still got too much growth in there like you might make a bad decision yeah, and then the five easy steps it can't be easy and heavily detailed right so i love this this format where we can talk um to folks in the chat and leave a video up for people to use as a library book reference kind of thing yeah when we talk about removing major limbs that means we have to choose a front yeah and front is defined as excuse me the view that you most prefer right all right it's not about the tree structure it's not about 2d 3d composition it's what you want to look at now once you've chosen what you want to look at then we go back and rely on composition right and, 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 uh, and that's that's the part that you you kind of have to live with right because if we're making big decisions yeah, I mean, I've already identified um, a pretty heavy branch I'm going to have to take away in my tree. You are way ahead of me, my friend. No, not really. Not really. I, your tree has worked a little more than mine. I just, I've already identified what's going to make a good front. Okay. Just on the shape of the trunk, it lends itself that says, hey, here's the front. And I'm saying, thank you. That was easy. Yeah. Well, it's, it's interesting, too. Like, as you work you focus on different things, right? Like right now, I'm just focused on the green growth. I'm not focused on anything that's brown, any trunks. I'm not focused on that at all. The only thing I'm looking for is that growth that's still underneath the branches, the growth that is in between the forks of two branches, yes. and the weak growth that's just pointed straight up. That's, and so, like, I'm just like laser focused on, on finding that and and cutting it. And it shows in your face. And what I like to point out to students are, hey, you're so into this, you don't even know what was bothering you before you got into this, right? Stress and the pressures of the day and the yesterday aren't with you right now. This beautiful tree is is bonding with you. So, and that's a good. That's good, Greg. That's exactly, you're on your fifth, fourth or fifth tree. That's where you need to be thinking. Yeah. Rush it. It's now, a good place. One, one comment that I got on um, one of my uh, bonsai videos was, um, man, you, you, you work that tree over too hard. I saw that. Um, and I guess like, like you said, there's no there's no right or wrong approach. Like obviously you don't want the tree to die, so you don't want to cut too heavily that like you're actually going to kill the tree. But doing this, like what we're doing here, is actually opening up this tree and allowing it to grow uh, stronger. Um, this this plant itself is like a carpeting plant, right? So any of the growth that's sort of like stuck underneath. It can't get any sun and it just dies and then it just grows longer and longer and wider and wider um, to carpet an, an area. And and that's not necessarily healthy for the plant because it's just like it's a bunch of weak growth. It's just more and more weak growth. So professional bonsai artists call this process cleaning. And every pre bonsai plant goes through cleaning so you can see the structure of the limbs yeah you've taken the plant into domestication you're going to care for it so your commenter was was correct we did overwork the tree but also correct is that we did a workshop demonstration type tree something we wouldn't do in everyday garden maintenance right so it's it's not a matter of being more precise it's bonsaiing well and having done this again hundreds of times, if I said, Greg, come to my garden and watch me trim this new bud off of this leaf, wasn't that fun? <laughs> you may not have as much enjoyment 
of bonsai as if we took a nursery stock tree for 10 bucks and turned it into a bonsai that we can now enjoy and, and take care of. Yeah. So yeah, the trees work hard and, and we've got to take care of it now for lending itself to our education. Right. But it's not a sacrificial lamb either. We're, we're taking steps to ensure that the tree does well. Right. The point isn't to kill it. The point is to sort of get it to the point where it's trained into uh, a bonsai as and opposed to just a garden shrub out in your yard. And here's, here's a couple of facts. Some of your bonsai trees will die because of the work you do on them. Yep. That's a fact. A very low percentage, hopefully. And trees that I have planted in the landscape have died. It's not the goal. It does happen. But it's not the rule. It's the exception. Right. So I don't take issue with your commenter. I really appreciate his concern for the bonsai. Sure. And I think he was speaking toward more of a garden maintenance type of bonsai work, not a workshop tree, which all of the bonsai professionals do. I don't claim to be a professional. I just love it, have experience, and like to share. Right. Uh, so the demonstration and the workshop trees are done differently than garden maintained trees. And so the goal, I guess, is if you want to get into bonsai, you learn these techniques, you learn composition, you have to start somewhere. Then you have a set of experience and guidance to take that specimen tree into all of its bonsai glory, regardless of what it is, what, what species of tree. Right. And I guess the, the ultimate point is, um, if you're going to have a bonsai, you can't, you can't have all of the branches, all of the growth, like some of it needs to leave in order for it to realize its potential, right? If you're going to follow the compositional, uh, rules and experiences of bonsai keeping, that's true. Now that said, some people consider a bonsai just a plant in a pot. So if I get an oak tree in a pot, and let it go wild, it's still a bonsai. Yeah. And that's the way I want it, in my little potted forest. Other people want to follow the more classical Japanese style, hear the rules, hear the numbers, do the math, make the plant conform to the numbers. And then mostly what I'm seeing these days are people doing somewhere in between. Yep. It comes down to a matter of preference, and even as you're learning, you're picking up your bonsai education, you choose who you're going to listen to. You want to? You want somebody that's just a fundamentalist and and uh, a purist and is going to tell you the Japanese way, period? Or do you want somebody that's avant-garde and is doing something mostly different because it's different? Right. Now, uh, Greg, you got enough. Yeah, we got there. Priscilla in the chat. Hey, Priscilla, how's it going? Hey, Priscilla, how are you? She's Man, lurking. I wonder how long she's been here. She's an artist. She'll love. We got it. Sandy in the chat. Hello, Sandy. Welcome. You're my favorite too, Priscilla, by the way. <laughs> Greg, you got an opportunity to do a bonsai tour every day, it sounds like, over there at that Northeast Bonsai place. Yeah, I mean, it's literally right down the road. I can drive there any day I want, which is huge. I think they do workshops and stuff too, and they, they ship uh, bonsai nationwide. Hey, if you ever take a workshop down there, Greg, um, don't tell them I said to do something differently. Just listen to what they have to say and then go yeah. back to doing it my way. Yeah, everyone's got a different technique. This is the, the rack school of, of bonsai right this here. This is bonsai for the people. Right? And this, doesn't, this doesn't mean that this is the, the right way to do it. Everyone might have a slightly different way. and. I mean, some people might even say that this is cheating, like using this plant, because it's it's literally the easiest plant in order to get an immediate result, right? Well, all of the all the pros start with this one too. So yeah, oh, and, it's good because like you can you can see an immediate result. Like sometimes, yeah, you know, like if if you decide to get into something for the first time, it would it wouldn't be very impactful to have to wait like 10 or 15 years in order to like have that aha yeah. moment. And and that's what this allows you to do in just an hour or two. And those courses, Greg, I've seen them 100, 150 bucks. You end up with the same product. You get a little one gallon juniper, you work it, you put it in a pot and you're really happy. Is this the one that most people use in, in a first class? Yeah. Like I 101. 
99% I'm going to say. And the reason is we all want people to have a positive experience. Yeah. This offers the best opportunity. I mean, I wouldn't tell you to do a negative experiment to prove that, but if you were to pick up a different type of juniper, even you're not yeah. going to have this experience when you're finished. Right. Okay. I think I'm getting close to needing to move on to the next step. How okay. are you doing over there? Greg, what we haven't mentioned is we get so focused, so laser focused, we need to back out of the tree sometimes. Give it a 360. Okay. Look at what we've done. Where's the tree going? Wow. Yours is uh, very dramatic. It is a good piece of stock. Yeah, yeah, you so, got a nice, uh, nice long branch there already sort of hanging over, huh? And I can't take credit. You guys have watched me do this. It's all the plants. I'm yeah. just applying the easy steps. This is just how the plant decided to grow on all on its own. Before, before we owned it, before we started training it, that's, that's the shape that it decided to take, and that's... That's what we have to start with. That's what we have to live with. Look at your tree. Now, the benefit, um, I, I should have mentioned this earlier, the benefit of video, we'll be able to do this. Always, before you start working a tree, photograph it. That's good yeah. for posterity. Then you can do the before and after. If you follow my Instagram, uh, River Life TN, I did a tree yesterday, six-hour project. I loved it. I mean, I had a day to work in the garden. Wow. And I took a nursery stock, Alberta, spruce i saw uh, that it's about three feet tall yeah and i turned it into a formal upright bonsai and absolutely Love it. loved it I, I swear the pictures don't do it justice it doesn't capture the curve and the space but man what a day you can look at that on the on the instagram i saw it it looks awesome and you, so I, that was like that one of those expensive courses i took is how to do formal upright yeah and so you can't apply the five easy steps to that tree. You, this, right. is, this is the foundation. This is a platform. Different type of tree, different process. Different style. Yeah. So, Greg, one thing on my tree I've noticed, I've got um, three trunks coming out of the soil. Okay. i got a main trunk. i got a side. I've got this little one here. It, it's not going to be, a, I don't know if you guys can see that. Yeah, it's just a little trunk at the top of the soil there. It's not going to be a part of my composition. It's obstructing my view. I'm going to go ahead and take it out. Now, hold on. Before you cut anything, yeah. you you want to step back and sort of look at your triangular composition. You want to you want to start to visualize what's what's the front, what's the back, yes. what's the left, and what's the right side of the tree. Correct. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Now let me hold your tree up. Let me see the trunk, Greg. So mine, wow, mine is a, a little gnarly. So That's I've got, cool. I've got one very big trunk right here. Mm -hmm. And I'll try to turn it so you can see it. I got one very big trunk here, and then as we turn it, I've got a branch that's right here that looks like it's probably connected. I think it is, but it's just really deep and really close to the base mm -hmm. of that uh, that one trunk. So I. I really have one trunk, and then of that trunk, I've got one, two, three main branches. Two of them go this way, one goes this way. So I don't think I'm gonna cut much for the, like the, the main trunks, but I do have a lot of extra branches that are sort of going in in odd directions that I'll, I'll need to clean up. That's pretty sweet. Well, I've got this one little lonely guy far away from the trunk, and he's I'm I'm going to take him out of there. Okay. Now I'm going to show you him. Now that's that's right down at the base. Yeah, that was he, he was like a a lonely little tree growing out of the side of the pot. Now it could be from the same root system coming up and he's just trying to uh, propagate by running a runner. And that's cool, but he's not adding to the composition here. He's not the tree I'm working on. So he's gone. We've got, okay. that would be a good for a cutting. Yeah. Well, we've got, got a cutting. Uh, Charlie. 
Dansley, welcome you guys. Hey we Dan, have a lot of fun out here. I'm in the greenhouse, and uh, we got in the house. Life with us. By the way, guys, anyone that's watching right now, if you're not subscribed to River Life on YouTube, oh. go do that right now. Thank you, because I he could. is the he is the teacher. He is the the Zen master here, helping us to uh, to make our our little bonsai. And enjoying our Sunday outdoors with with a little slice of nature. Thank you, Greg, for that. I appreciate it. Yeah. So, um, actually, you mentioned the the one little growth that you just cut off. Yeah. Um, on my my very first bonsai that I did with you um, uh, when we were doing a, a hangout, um, so you could teach me how to do this. I didn't realize I had two trunks, and one of them is actually a separate plant. It's got its own roots, and it's a separate plant. So, if if they uh, whoever like the nursery that's creating these, if they're starting from a seed, um, or even if they're starting from a cutting, if they're using multiple seeds or multiple branches to start with in a pot, those two pieces could be completely disconnected. And as this thing grows, those things could completely separate and, and sort of fall apart, right? Absolutely. So and you really don't understand. understand. Free. So the, I was concerned that you, it was your first bones I experience. And now you've got two trunks to work with. That complicated things a little bit, but you've handled it like a champ, treated it as if it were one trunk. Yeah. The thing is complete composition, no problem. And the benefit is later, as you're repotting, if you want to separate that and then have two bonsai trees for the price of one, you win. Right. Right. Um, for the purposes of like longevity here. Now, there, there are certain bonsais that do like a, a forest type approach where you do have multiple trunks and multiple trees. But for the purposes of, of this, what we really want to do is identify what that main trunk is and stick with that, right? Yes. Now I'm going to introduce a technique here, Greg, because I have this second trunk and actually it's going to make a cool second tree. I'm not going to incorporate it into this composition. So I'm going to teach us how to remove that from our composition without physically removing it. Let's see it. I'm going to have to excuse myself to do that. I need a, I need a, a tool here to make this happen. So I can leave this. I'll show you what I'm talking about here, if you can see. This is a second trunk. It is. It is this major limb right here. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, so you've, got, you've got two trunks, two root systems, two trees. And I'm, this will make a cool tree. This will be a neat bonsai tree, but I'm not going to include it in the composition of the main tree. Okay. And it, it's, I mean, it's, it's honking big, so I'm going to have to teach you a technique that helps you to eliminate that from your composition while it's still in the pot. Okay. I need a tool. I'll be back. All right. While Rack is going to get uh, the tool to help with that, what I'm going to do here is um, this, this branch here, is it it's connected very very low on the tree i don't know if you guys can see that right here it's very very low on this tree and what i want to do is i'm just pulling some of this surface soil away because i want to i want to figure out like is this connected to the main trunk or do i have two trees like this is super important to figure out before we do any major cutting is to figure out how many trunks we actually have, how many plants are actually in here. And we've been doing this for like a half hour, 45 minutes. Um, it's taken us this long to, to figure out like, you know, how many, how many trees we're actually working with here, you know, which is kind of crazy. So there's a lot of uh, just like surface roots and I, I don't want to disturb it too much, but what I have discovered here is this is a branch that is connected to our main trunk. So I only have one plant here. There's a single plant, there's a single trunk, and this branch here is just very, very low 
um, on that on that single trunk. So that's good information to have because now I'm going to try to figure out what's the front and what's the back of my plant and I need to take that into consideration because this is a, a branch that may need to go. So we're going to have to figure out what that what that does to the overall composition before we start cutting big branches. Okay. What do you got, Greg? Greg, I'm back. And um, on that, that was a good note. I was listening to you. What, what is an option? I don't recommend it today, but what is an option when you encounter that is to cut your stock um, container down even further. Okay. Take more soil away. Yep. And look at that. Look at that trunk line. But yeah. what I will tell you is, even if you did that, you would find that, yes, probably you have a, a very low branch coming out of the trunk. Yep. And if it's not bigger than your first branch above the soil level, it's not going to be a natural composition. Right. So it's going to go anyway. Right. But if, if that branch is coming from below the soil level telling you that you have more trunk below the soil level, you may want to investigate that. Not this time. Yeah, I think, I think we're good. I've, I've sort of dug down to the point where it's all like it's all surface roots now. Okay. And, uh, and I can see that, yeah, this is a branch. It's connected to the same tree. We've got one tree and and this branch that's very low is definitely going to have to go. Your tree looks good from here. This angle shows a lot of negative space and it's got some height. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. Nice branches. Yeah. Okay. I was a little worried at first that it was just going to be like, like a, just like a, a, you know, tall, but not like, not have any good, um, you know, width to it. Um, because I did cut off a lot of that. We started with a very, you know, long, wide plant. And, yeah. and aggressively cut that back, that green growth back. But I, I, I think we're going to have a really well balanced one at the end. All right. So I got my tool and I'm going to make this major branch disappear. Okay. This one. Can you, I don't know if you can see which one is that one. Yeah, I can see it. All right. So my tool is a kitchen paper towel. <laughs> okay. You're not going to believe this. Let me turn it around so you can see. What's going on? You're, this is the method, and after I show you the method, we'll look at the result. So I just move that branch, separate it just enough to get a, a paper towel in there. And this is the one that's a separate trunk, right? It's a second separate, tree. Separate trunk, second tree, that's correct. And these leaves grown in these containers, they get so compact on each other. I use that chopstick a lot just to comb them out. Go okay. Uh, in the chat says, does anyone know how the bonsai tree started the history? I do. Okay, can you see that? Yeah. Okay, so this huge limb just disappeared. Now yeah. I can work without it being a part of my composition, making decisions on what's the front, how's my tree balanced, it's gone with a paper towel. Now, like gonna, gonna now is, there, is there any any scenario where you would keep that one? Absolutely. It's just a matter of preference. Okay. But And, and sometimes I, I keep them, especially in the workshop, just so I don't have to go through this, uh, to take the time to do this. But that is such a cool shaped trunk i want to save it for another tree okay yeah so rather than make this one tree i want that to be its own separate i tree. got you so so there's two decisions here you could cut it and just discard it yes. or if you thought it was interesting enough to be its own tree yes. you could leave it there and then when we're when we go in and uh unpot this you can actually save it yes Take okay. it apart and make. I could leave it in this composition. I could have a two trunk composition, right? As one bonsai tree, but I, that I want to make a separate tree. All right. What's what's your decision? Um, 
Well, I'm going to leave it. Uh, I'm going to save it for repotting and take it out. It's not going to be a part of this composition. It's going to be its own tree later. Okay. Um, Priscilla says she's laughing over here, listening to us complimenting each other's branches. Oh, yeah. You know. Yeah. Don't uh, not you gotta, talk, Patricia. You just got to work, work the branches a little bit, you know? Like, okay, you so. Discover. Discovered the branches, Priscilla. <laughs> Be the branch. Be the branch. Right? Now, in my case, um, I know that this very low-hanging branch, it, um, it's at like a 90-degree angle from my main trunk. And so that I don't think that there's ever a scenario where that would be beneficial to my composition. So instead of using um, a uh, paper towel, I think I'm just going to remove mine. There you go. And it doesn't have roots because it's the same trunk, so um, it's not something I can save. So I'm just going to I'm just going to chop it out. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to use my concave cutters, and I'm just going to get in as close as I can, so that when I chop this, it leaves. Um, it, it's like as, as close to, uh, that trunk as possible. Yeah. Flush. Hey, Greg, let me show you something that hold that branch. Okay. Take the end of that branch and cut it with the concave cutter. Just cut a little piece off the end. Uh, wait, right. Greg, hold on, hold on. Score it or cut it. We're going to cut it, but I want you to cut it uh, 90 degrees. You look like you're 45 degrees on that cut. 90 like yep. this um straight across the trunk i can't okay. see it. okay just cut it yeah and look into that piece and see if you can see the concave nature of that cut i can see it from here oh yeah see it yeah, leaves it's sort of different. like a like a u shape yep that's what we're after that that's what a pair of scissors won't do you can use scissors but that gives you a little edge right Cool. All right. Well, I'm going to toss this. Let her go. Goodbye, branch. Now, you can already see how much that sort of opened up this composition. It was just extra. It was extra, and it was, it was never going to add to our composition. But I think I'm at the point where I'm ready to, to figure out uh, the, the front and the back of my tree. It looks good. I bet people are saying, man, there's a bonza already from where he started. I know. Priscilla, you should definitely go get a bonsai. Colorado, I'm sure there's I'm sure there's uh, nurseries all over Colorado that have uh, junipers. Junipers well, are very hardy. Yeah, they're tough. They're they're great for this type of workshop. Greg, we're ready to move to step four. That's the big one. We're going to remove unwanted branches. All right. So do you know what your front and your back is? I do. Okay. I think – so I've got – I want to I wanna talk through this before I make a decision. All right? Good, good. Um, I've got my one main trunk here. Yes. And I've got two branches which sort of go like this, like a U shape. And then I've got one branch that sort of goes backwards. And I know that the next step is uh, dealing with branches that are sticking straight towards you. Yes. And we have to remove those. Yep. So in, in my opinion, I think this should probably be the front of the tree because I've got a branch that goes this way. I've got a branch that goes this way. And I've got branches that go backwards, but not straight back. And I don't have a whole lot of growth that's going straight forward. So I've got like a triangular composition here and and not a whole lot that's going to um, not a whole lot that's going to impact the, the viewer's angle. Like if I cut a few of these off, you can see how quickly you can you can see into that trunk line and yeah. the branches that are sort of going off to the sides. So and I think I, I think 
this is going to be the front of my tree and I just need to get rid of some of this growth. I understood every word you said, Greg, if you're in the chat and you've never done this before, and that was kind of ethereal, hang in there with us. What Greg exactly. said was he chose a point of view that was his preference because yeah. it, it had so many visual cues from that angle. And now if he were to take his chosen front, which by the way, Greg, uh, one practice is to have a, or a chopstick to stick in the, in the pot to identify your front. So as you rotate, you, you remember what you were thinking was your front. Yeah. You take that front and now you rotate the pot 90 degrees. You'll see some very unpleasant sides. Yeah. It says, hey, that's not pleasant. I'm looking, at, I'm looking at a very unpleasant side. Like this is the back of my tree, what you're looking at right now. And if that was, yep. if, that was if I chose that as the front, that would look ugly because my two main branches would be both going away from the viewer. And I would have to cut all of this stuff that's going straight at you. And it, it would it wouldn't I mean there would be no composition there at all. And if you turned it ninety degrees, that beautiful drama in the trunk line would disappear. It would right. go in, in line with the viewer. You wouldn't get any of that spatial beautifulness. Right. Okay. So sometimes, especially with these trees, the front presents itself and says, Hey man, this is what you want to look at. Yeah. Okay, so that said. Now you can remove unwanted branches. All right. Starting with branches that grow straight toward the viewer. You can't determine that until you determine the front. Yeah. If it grows straight toward the viewer, we call those eye pokers. And it's not okay. nice for a bonsai tree to poke the viewer in the eye. So you can get rid of those. I'll show you. Here's the front of my tree. Yeah. This guy is an eye poker. This guy, pretty, pretty good sized branch. He's coming out of there. We'll see what this looks like with this guy going. And the, the, the reason that's important is because it's obstructing your view of the rest of the tree and, most importantly, the trunk of the tree. And it comes at you in a two-dimensional manner. You yeah. only just see a, a narrow portion of green. You don't see branch, curvature, space, drama, movement, anything. Right. But like you said, it is hiding all of those things. Yeah. Okay, so I placed I placed my chopstick in the, the front where I want the front of my tree. And right away, in terms of eye pokers, you can see that there's this one here and there's this one here that just goes straight at the viewer. So I'm going to remove those, both of them. And it's actually weak growth on, on in both of these examples. This one is weak growth that's off of the main trunk. So that can go. And this one is weak growth off of this side um, branch. So that one can go. Actually, I'm going to use my concave cutters because this one's a little bit bigger. There you go. You got to have the right tool for the job. Oh. It makes it easier. Oh, it's not easier, but you it makes it easier. What just happened visually. Look at, look at how, how amazing of a transformation that's already started to make. That was great. Wasn't that another one here? You see this one here? Yep. This one's going. Look at that. Yeah. There you go. So with the five easy steps, you're not apprehensive about doing that, knowing you're bringing the best out of the tree. Yeah. And you know, I actually like the chopstick method because you can like any any branch that's literally touching the chopstick needs to go. <laughs> right. Oh, what are you saying, Greg? That I got another one right here that needs to go crossing my chopstick? I think so. Let's see it. Chop it. By the way, let's notice this one. Where did I remove one? Right here. I removed one right here. So more That's vision, good. just like Greg did. I'm going to do this on camera, and then I'll clean it up. Here's a technique. I'm going to leave a, a stub on this branch just so I can show you guys the visual effect that it has. Yeah. Now you can go back with the concave cutter and clean that little stub up. But Greg was right. It was blocking the whole main trunk line of the tree. Now you can see it. Yeah. It's it's beautiful. Like the more you open up that trunk to the viewer, the, the better off you are. That's what we're after, isn't it? What do we got? Priscilla is multitasking, listening to bonsai magic. I, I think that's us. <laughs> uh, doing laundry, cleaning out the fridge, making lunch.
puffer water. Priscilla is the like woman. Puffers? That sounds like fun. Proteus says, are you guys aiming for a particular style, free-flowing, based on the tree? Um, we are free-flowing, freestyling, but these procumbens nanas, the way they grow, typically it's going to be semi-cascade or cascade that we end up with. Yeah. Cascade means that the uh, the droop of the branch goes below the pot. That's a cascade. It comes yeah. below the pot. Semi-cascade, it goes below the surface. I've so got, a, I got an example of that here. So in this one that uh, we did on camera uh, a week or two ago, you can see this branch right here. It droops below the side of this pot. Yeah, it's below the surface, so it's semi-cascade. Yeah. And you can you can use wiring and other techniques to raise that branch. Yeah. You can do whatever you want. I mean, it, the preference again. But the nature of this tree, procumbens, is like the pronate. It wants to hug the ground. You see, so you see this one again? Mm -hmm. It's starting to uh, – I, I cut this down. It was much longer, but I it's starting to, to droop down below the, the surface there. Okay. You got any more major branches you want to remove? I've got a lot of major branches, I think. <laughs> I haven't gotten to them yet. I'm, I'm taking my time with this step. I'm enjoying it. Here's another one I've got. I don't, I'll try to make you see it. It's on. It's growing out of the top, and it's a very small branch. Yeah. The, the caliper is very small compared to the other, so it's out of place. It's not a natural growth, so I'm going to get rid of him. And that's that's something that is again, it's uh, it's obstructing it's obstructing the the main trunk in a way, right? Because it it's it's drawing your eye to the fact yes. that it's tiny growth yeah. coming it's out of the main trunk. It's distracting. That's the word. It's distracting. Yep. So a lot of that weak growth is is actually distracting from the composition. Greg, see this angle I use the concave cutter with? Yeah. I want it, it's the point is down. My goal is to get flush with the limb when I make the cut. So yep. sometimes I'll have to rotate the concave cutter depending on how I'm able to get through the other limbs to do that. Yep. Priscilla says, how often do you water a bonsai? The answer is as often as it needs it. And it needs, its, it's frequency needs largely depend on the substrate that you put it in. We want a fast draining soil. So I would consider every day, not in full sun, in full sun, mm -hmm. maybe twice a day. Some delicate trees, I know bonsai nurseries that water four and five times a day. Mm -hmm. But these trees, we use a little bit of organic material in our soil mix. So I go by weight, I feel the pot, is there any water in there? Is it getting dry? I know there's a lot of oxygen. And typically, I start every other day. I check it the very next day, but I start every other day. And what you'll learn in the five easy steps is on the repotting, we actually dunk the pot in water and soak it underwater. So it's fully soaked from the get-go. Yep. I think I'm averaging like one one watering a week, maybe two in the greenhouse, but it's it's kind of humid in here. Um, I'm actually I'm thinking about making an outdoor location for my bonsai, and so I'll probably water it more often once I put them out there and more full sun. And that just makes sense, right? Yeah. Not too complicated. Sometimes you get that yellowing if you're overwatering. If that's not the problem causing yellowing, you got to keep an eye on it. You don't want to underwater. Yeah, but you're right. Um, these junipers are are super hardy. Like compared to some other plants, like these things, these things are like almost bulletproof. Like from underwatering to overwatering to not enough sun to too much sun. Like I left I left three of these in my greenhouse all winter long, just in the pots. And they were fine. Yeah, I agree. Now, at, at a certain temperature, 
for a certain length of time, they go dormant. These plants have a dormancy stage, but they're evergreen. They don't turn brown and drop their leaves. They stay green, but they're not growing. Right. Dormant. So after they get dormant, then that's a time you can, you can do things to them. You can give them another trim, but during the growing season, I would lay off uh, major work during the summer after the initial styling. It's time to recuperate, maintain yep. health. Oh, Greg, I've got to go get another tool. All right. I used it yesterday in the garden and didn't replace it in my roll. Well, that's a bad uh, idea. Ha. I'm just uh, I'm taking my time here. Musing this over, trying to figure out what I want to do. Um, so this is the front, and I've got this one little stub here that's sticking straight towards the viewer. So I guess it could be considered an eye poker, but it's also weak growth. It's not the main branch, um, and I don't really see a future for this this little piece here. So uh, I'm just gonna snip him off with my concave cutters. So one thing we haven't talked about, and, and we, can, we can talk about it more when Rack gets back, but we're, we're looking to make cuts that add drama to our composition. So this, that little branch was in the way of this main branch and the direction that it was taking. It's sort of like swooping in this direction. And so by opening that up, we can see that dramatic shift uh in direction of that limb so it it, add, it instantly adds more character to the tree the important part is just um it's always returning to the middle of your composition like your your center that chopstick and then just identifying what's what's extra like what what doesn't need to be there and it does get harder and harder as you go and you don't want to cut too much but there's certainly always going to be stuff that needs your attention This is interesting, actually. So what I'm looking at here is these two branches. And the main branch is actually this one. It goes this way. And this is like a side branch, but they're both woody. Um, the problem is, though, if you look at it from this angle, um, this one is sort of swooping this way. And it's going to be hidden by this branch and this branch assuming that these stay in the composition. So anything that grows this way towards the back isn't really going to be seen um, as much. So I think what I want to do is I want to I want to redirect this branch to grow this way. So I think I'm actually going to cut this stub off. It doesn't have a whole lot of growth on it already. And that will sort of open up and divide the tree. Because if you look at the chopstick right here, if you look right here, this branch could technically go this way, right? But this one is always going to be going this way. And so if we're trying to sort of divide this composition into a left and a right, this, this one's the one that's always going to be in the way. So I'm going to chop him off. And I think that makes a difference. It might not. It might not be a dramatic difference right now, but I think over time, you know, being able to grow in the other direction, I think will will add up. Priscilla and Dan having fun in the chat. I'm back. Hey, Priscilla and Dan, still hanging out. Thanks. Oh yeah. They're hanging out, multitasking, doing all the Sunday, Sunday stuff. Gen pliers. What are those? Um, 
So here's a here's a Japanese word for you, Jin, G I N. Oh, yeah, yeah. References dead wood. <laughs> so when you want to add gin to your tree, it's just a touch. It's just a nice touch. You take the gin plier. First of all, you take the concave cutter. Quick tip. Find something you want to gin. I left some of these small branches on the lower trunk. And you ring the bark. You don't cut that off. You squeeze gently with the concave cutter and you ring it, cutting through the cambium, but not the interior wood. Then you take the gin plier very simply and squeeze it. Squeeze the bark. Smash it. Smash the bark. And then, like magic, like so many things that are easy in bonsai, once you know how to do it, it this bark just slips right off. Hmm. Now you've got a piece of deadwood, a deadwood feature on your tree that's kind of striking. You see right. that? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, the white part. Yep. Nice. Kind of tells a story of how rugged it was in the early years of this tree's life, and it, it went on to make it. Yep. So many features of these trees just it make it appear like a giant windswept tree. Well, now that's another style, windswept. It's very popular. And typically you'll have every branch going in one direction. Mm. Very dramatic. The most dramatic. Hmm. Your tree's looking sharp, Greg. What do you think? I'm liking it. Um, I'm actually I'm finding some branches now that I'm I'm shortening. I didn't shorten them before, but now I'm I'm shortening them. I know I, I still have quite a bit of excess growth on here. Like there's even some even some uh, branches that are like underneath that I'm still cleaning up. Yes. That's that's just like a a constant thing where you just got to keep going back to it. You know, you paid high dollar for that tree, but it had a lot of branches. That, that's a honking tree. I like it. Yeah. That's got a lot of character. I'm actually I'm happy that it was all one trunk. Right. You don't you really there's no way to know when you buy it how many trunks it actually is right. and it's it's kind of a bummer if you get like all the way to this point and then half of the tree um is a different trunk and it just it doesn't work you know what i mean yes well as you get more familiar with the five easy steps to a bonza you start to pick the front sooner yeah and you recognize you don't have to work all the branches because you've chosen the front and you eliminate those you know aren't going to be there in step four anyway. Right. But as you're learning, it's important to learn the steps in order. I'm just taking my time at this point. Like, I I know that there's stuff I need to remove, but uh, I'm, just, I'm just going at it kind of slowly, you know? And that's okay with you, right? This, yeah, this is the... This is the, the most enjoyable part because, like you said, like the, the first steps, those are just like cleanup steps. Like those are things you have to do. It's a little mindless. It's fun, but it's a little mindless. And you just you have to do it in order to open up the tree. And now we're at the point where where we're making some design considerations, right? Yes. So this is where like the art comes in. Like those first steps, anyone can do it. Anyone can do it and, yeah. and get the same exact result. This this is the point where yes. real decisions are being made. You impact your influence on the tree. Yeah. And each each cut that you make at this point makes um, quite a dramatic change. So you don't want to overdo it. You don't want to do it too fast without thinking about it. And I find that like this is the part where um, you get some like gratification out of out of each cut because you're you're slowly improving your composition. 
Yeah, those first few steps are wax on, wax off, for sure. And then once you make that decision and it has a positive result, you get internal feedback that's positive. Yeah. That's why I ask you about that feeling. How did it feel when you're doing that? It feels good. It feels good when um, when you can see the composition coming together, you know. And I've, I've actually got a branch that I've been looking at for a long time, like the last 15 minutes. And it's this one right here. And it, it technically, it is poking straight at us. Yep. And I, I think it's time to remove it. See, you found that from contemplation. It wasn't immediate. Yeah. I wasn't sure if I needed it, but now that it's gone, it makes a big difference. Yeah. Now, and that tree, this is common in bones eye. That tree is just giving the viewer a hug. That's perfect. Right? Yeah. It's like two kind of big arms coming around to give you a hug. Falling forward and welcoming the viewer. Come on in. Now, here is a, another big decision I need to make. Um, I have on the very back of my composition, I have this very large branch, which is pointing straight away from the viewer. So, and I, I liked I liked your technique rack where you just like covered it. Yep. Because you can instantly see, this is our chopstick, this is our front. You can instantly see what kind of a difference it makes just by getting rid of it. And I think it makes a huge difference getting rid of it. Let me speak to you about back branches. I, I tell you, Greg, in the beginning stages, if it's pointing straight away, cut it off. It's not adding to your composition. Yeah. But back branches are like spare bedrooms. You got company coming over, you want to clean up, just shove everything in the spare bedroom clean. So a back branch, if you've got a very vastly open negative space that looks void and empty instead of interesting, you can bend a back branch into that area. To okay. Fit in. In these plants, they're so rich with branches, we really don't have that problem. Yeah, but that that's an interesting point, though, because um, that that's a situation where if you realize that at this point in time, instead of cutting it, you leave it, you leave it to grow longer, and then you start to train it into the right shape that you want it to be. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this being your fourth or fifth tree, I would say excellent consideration. If it were yeah. your first tree, I would say, no, get rid of it. We've got to have a good looking tree here in a minute. Yeah. Now the, the other thing that's worth noting is I have my main trunk right here and, and this branch that I'm looking to get rid of is coming off the bottom of that main trunk. So it's not adding to the, it's not adding to the composition because it's, it's pointing straight back. It's not adding to um, like the, the aesthetic appeal of the the main trunk because it's sort of sticking off from the back and like underneath even so I don't I don't think it adds a whole lot I already have a branch which goes sort of backwards but towards the side so I think that's the one I'm gonna keep and and this one I'm gonna cut so I'll, I'll point you guys straight forward so you can see the result here Oh man, that's awesome. That made a big difference. It did. It, it, the plant just breathed when you did that. Yeah. Oh. That's a good looking tree, Greg. I'm liking it, but I, I know I have some more to cut. Like this is a giant green branch up here. Beautiful too. Uh, but I want to, I think I want to keep it because it, uh, it adds some drama. Absolutely. And creates negative space. It does it all. It's doing a lot. Yeah. I still have some dangling growth. I'm getting ready to make a couple of major cuts here, Greg. See this uh, large limb coming down the paper towel? Yep. It's a beautiful limb. Heavy, major limb. But there's two things I don't like about it. One is it grows away from the front. Okay. You have a lot of value. And the other thing is it grows in a direction that just becomes a third competition. Like, where am I supposed to look? Where's this right. going? Too busy. Too much going on. 
it competes with your other branch that's going exactly. in the same direction. And for me, that's a consideration. Other people may want to leave that on there. Yeah. Be and here, look, I'm going to do it on camera like you did. I like that. This is a major part of the tree that's not there anymore. I can't put it back on. It's gone. Yeah. Yeah. So I had to think about that and use my experience to define my preference. And it said, it is beautiful, but not for this composition. Now I've got, I left this large piece of the branch on top. I think I'm going to gin that. Interesting. Yeah, it's a large branch. I think I'm going to gin it and see what happens. And then if I don't like the gin, I can take it off. Right, right. So you're just, you're leaving options on the table. There you go. I like that. Yeah, I think I think that made a big difference. So now I've got I've got a little branch here that is it's sort of sticking towards the viewer. But it's also getting in the way of seeing this uh, curve shape. So I think I'm going to get rid of that. I got to tell you, Greg, that was a, an excellent cut. You picked that off by yourself. Yeah. Now, here's here's what I'm running into. I've got, even though we've cut so much of this back, I've still got a lot of green growth. And I think some of these pieces of green growth are too tall, too long. So I'm I'm considering now cutting back like half of the green growth on some of these branches just to to open it up a little bit more. You know? Like any any time you've got uh, these like pads uh -huh. that work. are interfering with each other in a way, mm -hmm. like it, it kind of detracts from the overall composition like it it's not it's not clear it's not clear what you should be looking at okay now you're getting into a more detailed refinery yeah and this is where i would caution you to slow down yeah you've, you've generated enough drama that is a beautiful tree let it relax every leaf on that tree is going to reposition itself now the competition for light has changed mm. and you don't you don't have to take it down to the uh to the last leaf of detail. If you're if you're saying that there's too much clumpy growth and you want more gaps, absolutely. Remove the greenery. Yeah. I think I've I've still got some more branches to cut. I'm not quite there yet. How are you doing over there? How do you like that gin? I like it. So, I think it's I got another major branch. You can remove it later with just a simple cut, but you can't put it back, so you might as well see what it looks like. I'm going to do another major branch cut here, and that's going to do it for my major limbs being gone. That's a big one. Yeah. <laughs> wow. It was growing backwards, and so all it was doing was it was decreasing the amount of negative space. Yeah. Now, what do you think about, um, we'll center this guy. What do you think about this one here? That's, um, rotate that tree just a little bit. Let me look at it as you rotate it. Greg, if it were me, I would probably cut it. We're cutting it. Okay. I was, I was, I've been eyeballing it for the past few minutes. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't lose anything there. And again, if you got one in question, sometimes you can put a little bread tie around it. And every time you look at it, consider it, you can cut it tomorrow or next week or mm. decide not to cut it at all. Yeah. I like that. Oddball Aquatics is here. Pokey Paul is here. Hey, what's up? Hanging out. Hanging out in the chat. Pokey Paul's been catching uh, sharks at night. Wow. Oddball Aquatics is trying to breed uh, those rope fish. That's pretty cool. That's a big undertaking. <laughs> Rack and Greg, yes, please. 
We are doing branch things, Priscilla. And we'll make your wildest dreams come true, Priscilla. Any fish tanks is here. Saying hi, dragon lady. That's right. Oddball Aquatics in the house. This is so much fun. This is just like a, a relaxing thing to do on a Sunday, you know? And productive, even. And I like it better that we're sharing it. So I'm I'm still battling with uh, some of the, the previous steps where we got to remove some of the growth in between the branches. I'm still running into some of that. I'm also still running into some of the, the growth underneath the branches that I'm cleaning up here, too. So I'm not even at the, the refining part yet. Which is the fifth of the five easy steps. Hmm. How close are you? Um, I've, uh, I've kind of ventured in to that while also catching up on things I missed along the way. Yeah. Uh, That's actually the, the, the fun part is uh, finding, finding the stuff that you missed because uh, you know right away that, that it needs to go. There's yep. no real thought that needs to go into it, but it's just a matter of finding it, you know? And it's easier to find at this stage. It is easier to find. Absolutely. And it is like it's it's small stuff, you know, like I'm just I'm chopping this little tiny piece off. Yeah. So I've started on the right side of my tree and this branch is refined. I'm not taking it any further in any direction. Done. Okay. This one is just a tuft that only survived because I like the trunk and the drama. It's a nice size limb, the drama. It yep. stays. I may take one or two pieces off. Now I'm moving over to the other other half of the trunk, doing the refinement and catching up on the things I missed from the earlier steps. Mm. Looks like I'm trying to hide my tree with the paper towel there, but if you're here <laughs> earlier, you know the purpose of that. Where's the uh, mass aquariums today? He started doing bonsai stuff. He did. He's got. Uh, he did three of them. I don't know that he ever made a video on it, but um, I know he's he's got a, a stressful life. Yeah. Work and four kids and a dog, and uh, I think one night he just uh, made some bonsais and he said it was very relaxing. Yeah. He's he's got those, he did he's got want those to do those doors on his porch right now. He didn't want YouTube content. He just wanted something to be relaxing. Yeah. I sent him a kit like I sent you. He couldn't find a tree, so I sent him a tree. Yep. He, he like you, went right to town on that thing and loved it and did great. I think people who appreciate nature really dig this. Yeah, absolutely. I'm happy to share I'm I'm at the point where I feel like I need to trim a few of my branches down a little bit, just because they're a little too they're a little too long and bushy. Your Gregory scissor hands, All right? Watch out. What are we going to do at Aquatic Experience, Greg? I'm not sure, but I, I think at the very least, so there's um, the fish tube booth, right? Yep. For all the aquarium uh, YouTubers to, to sort of gather around, hang out, talk to each other. Uh, I think it would be really cool if you ran a little uh, clinic, if you just sort of sat down with uh, all your supplies and – and just sort of like did a, you know, like a live art. Like a demonstration? Demonstration, oh. yeah. You might even be able to um, get people to bid on it and, and donate to uh, charity. That'd be cool. Uh, yeah, right. the, 
Project. I know. Uh, I think it's Project Project Piaba is okay. the freshwater charity that Fish Tube is focused on this year. So that would be a good one. I like it. Get some people to do like a little a little silent auction. You know. You think uh, people would be interested in an evening workshop? I hope so. I think that would be a lot of fun. I think if they saw it in action and we could convince them that, yeah, you really can do this. Anyone in the chat going to uh, the aquatic experience? I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a blast for sure. I'm uh, I'm really trying to go to um, um, the Chicago Aquashella too. That's the thing I'm actually focused on here. Are you going? Is my aquarium box going? I don't think so. Um, just because I don't feel like driving. Right from Massachusetts to uh, Chicago again. That was um, that pushed my limits. <laughs> it was a uh, it was a long drive. I'm a I'm a wuss when it comes to long drives. I I don't like it. Like I'll do it. I'll do it, but I don't like it. Right. The mistake we made two years ago going to uh, the aquatic experience in Chicago was we uh, basically like worked a full day. Yes. And it was like 10, 10 o'clock at night and we, we packed everything up and drove through the night. And I was just totally exhausted by the time we got there. Well, I can imagine. And it, it took me like a full day just to recover and like being at a trade show it's like it's not it's not like it's restful time where you can just sort of relax and recover it's like go 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 and you guys were swamped yeah the hour of the show being on the floor and i talked to mike and uh, he said i just i, I want to go out to eat with nobody i just to relax <laughs> i know uh, feel for you guys you had Peck Tech over there running crazy. He was the booth babe. Oh, yeah. He was so good with the people. He is. He's the best. He's making selfies with all of his fans. and He's very approachable. I like Sean. I'm glad he's back to making videos, too. Yeah, everyone needs a break, though. I get it. Oh, yeah. I, I totally understand. I think his uh, creativity is really stifled from the typical YouTube format. He worked yeah. with clones for a while, and then he did that that really cool video where he had a a, a ghost experience with an aquarium. <laughs> I keep telling him to go back to the clones. I I know it's a lot of work to edit that stuff, but the, those videos are just so fun, like scripted skit type content which also includes uh, fish content. And he's so smart. He had a really good storyline for those characters. Yeah, I liked it. We're starting to open this tree up pretty good here, huh? Yeah. I think you're really close to being there on that one. Yeah. I'm having a little bit of a trouble over here. You see there's like this lower branch here. Yeah. And then there's this higher branch here, and they're sort of interrupting each other. Yeah. I wouldn't do much with that today, Greg. No? No. Let that relax. See what's going to happen. Okay. Now, I've gone crazy with the gin over here. And um, it's just oh, yeah. too, it's too busy. The lowest piece of um, running, that piece running parallel to that branch is going to come off of there. The little one on the trunk um, is going to go, but I'm going to keep this guy. And so now the tree starts to tell a story. Was there an insect infection? Was there a storm? Did another tree fall on that branch? Was it a lightning strike? 
Mm. Whatever it was, something caused that limb to, to be dead. I like it. And I'm going to take these other little guys out of here. Oddball Aquatic says uh, she'll be filming a music video at Aquashella. Wow. Cool. Aquashella, Dallas, pack up for 12 hours, leave at 4 a.m., drive all night, get to Dallas 13 hours later, set up till midnight, and be back at 8 a.m. Yikes. Three hours of sleep. Yeah, that's no fun. I, I... I am a total baby when it comes to lack of sleep. Like I just become grumpy as all hell and it's not good. Like I like my sleep. I like my sleep. All right. I'm I'm sort of like approaching my final styling steps and what what's your what's your recommendation for, for sort of final styling um so i would look at the very end of the branch like your what i see as your tallest leaf that's facing the camera it looks like it's just yeah right at the very tip of that it looks like a bud that hasn't opened yet i'd, I'd cut that guy back yep okay yep and now all of that energy that was being requested by that new growth is now going to be refocused somewhere, hopefully making our trunk and our limbs thicker. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. So the, the very, very tippy top of any branches at this point, if they've got buds on them, we just need to clip them back. It's a good idea. And that is some fine manicuring. Yep. And here's, here's an example of that. I don't know if you can see that. Yes. You see those little, those little things. So the growing growing buds as opposed to like you can see sort of this growth is opened up yeah that mature leaf yeah so anything that's sort of like spear shaped and is still like growing we just want to trim trim that back a little bit just so it we're redirecting the energy that's what you said yes and FYI, for future use, this only, not today, uh, once you get into wiring a bonsai tree, that's for shaping the branches and placing them wherever you want them, you wrap the wire around the trunk of the limb properly, you bend it into shape, you leave it there for a period of time until it sets, or you, it starts to cut into the bark. You remove it, apply it, uh, spiraling wire in the opposite direction, leave it for another period of time until it sets or starts to bite into the bark. And now you've learned how to make the tree grow, quote unquote, in, in the way that you want it to. But our goal today is to use this stock because it already has dramatic bends and we don't have to, we don't have to wire it in order to have a beautiful bonsai tree. Yeah. But just, I mentioned, I throw that out there, lest someone thinks we're not aware of that. We are. It's just not the purpose of this demonstration or workshop. Pokey Paul says, Grumpy Greg. That's totally true. And my wife is asking if we have extra soil at home. Oh, we got another lurker in the chat. Um, we do have extra soil at home. I have three bags of soil. Um, you can have first dibs at it, and then I'm using the rest of it later today. Have we got competing uses of soil over there at the Jones household? I guess so. I don't know. I, I've got these. Uh, I got to shoot a YouTube video later today, um, and I've got these um, uh, fabric pots for all of my my vegetables that I've started back there, and I'm gonna fill those fabric pots full of uh, soil and start to plant some of those outside the greenhouse. Cool. Yeah. You think you're about finished with that one, Greg? Well, what do you think? I think it looks great from here. Yeah. I'm just I'm trying to find uh, those little tippy top pieces that you mentioned. I got a, a few of those to trim back. 
I don't want to go too crazy because we sort of got the shape that we're looking for. We just don't want to have that excess growth. Yeah, you don't have to do all that in one setting either. All right, I think I'm. I think I'm about ready. I think I'm about there. I don't think I trimmed. Uh, I trimmed one more branch. I decided I didn't like, and I turned it into a gin. Okay. It's going in the same direction as the other gin, adding to the story. Yeah, and whatever it was stopped growth going in that direction, so we went over here. Yeah. And what do you guys think? Uh, what do you guys think about this branch here? Removing. So we're looking at the front, right, with our chopstick. What do you guys think about removing that? I'd leave it for now, Greg. Leave it? Yeah. That thing might relax down into that negative space and then create two negative spaces. Uh, okay. It is pointed straight straight away, but I agree. Like I could train it in this direction or train it in this direction, and it could it could help in the long term. Up to you. You're the man with the scissors. <laughs> <laughs> You got scissors, you got the power. Denny's fish tank says leave it. All right, I will leave it. We got plenty of time to make more decisions about this thing. Greg, that is awesome. I mean, this is going to be the best before and after photo of all your trees, I think. You think so? Yeah. It, I think it's got a little more height, a little mm. more drama in different directions. Yeah. And uh, lots and lots of potential for future work. I like it. All right. What's what's the next step? You there? Yeah. Um, you ready to go yeah. The next step? I ended up something like this. It's kind of a sparse tree, but I'm good with that. Lots okay. of bark. Lots of I bark. Like it. So, um, are we ready to uh, take that old nursery soil off of these plants? I think I think so. Well, congratulations on completing the five easy steps of bonsai styling once again, Greg. Thank you. I couldn't have done it without your help. I was happy to help you and anyone else. Glad to do it. But I think what we want to do is I always squeeze this pot to loosen up the soil. Okay. That just makes it easier to remove the pot, right? Yeah, because I'm going to lift my tree out by the base of the trunk. Okay. I'm just going to grab it like that. Look at that. Look at those roots. Crazy. It's like a giant root ball. Can you believe that? One little plant made all these roots. You can see all the little fertilizer balls in it, too. Yeah. Listen, they don't play at the nursery. Grow oh. money. They want those guys growing. Yeah. Yeah. So what I do is I take my chopstick and just start raking across the top. And this is a messy, this is a very messy part. I just start at the trunk and rake to the outside to untangle those roots. What do we got? So I've, I've got a bucket here with uh, soil um, from these nursery pots that I've been saving. So I'll use that out, outside with my other plants. Um, I also have this little, little uh, Rubbermaid Tupperware container here too. And I'm going to try to uh, loosen all of my soil into this so I can save as much of that soil as possible. Hey, Greg, for the sake of appropriateness, will you do what I just demonstrated, break across the top with your chopstick from the trunk to the outside? This here? Poke yet, just rake. Rake. Yeah, there you go. Okay, you can do that with a comb or whatever. Okay, now do what you're going to do with the poke. That really loosens it up. Okay, yep. let me show you a hack. 
We know those techniques. Those are good. I take the pot, I put my fingers kind of in the middle, and I squeeze. And you what? Squeeze. Squeeze? Feel that? Oh, uh, yeah. What's happening? A lot of that loose soil just sort of falls out the bottom. Yes. And uh, <laughs> it's a good hack, right? That is good. You got to be careful with those roots, not to tear them. But we're going to loosen the soil 100 times quicker. Yeah. But I teach you that proper way is going to be important when we repot it. After we've got it set in our bonsai soil and we go to repot it, you want to do the raking method. Right. So we are going to remove a lot of these roots. But right now what we're interested in is just loosening all the soil and keeping all of the roots intact, right? So that's correct. And all of those roots, we're supporting all of that tree we cut off. So we're bringing the tree back into balance. Okay. By removing the roots. We also got to get it to fit in that uh, bones eye training pot, which as All you right. can see, it wouldn't fit right now. Just, I've started to loosen a lot of this, especially the bottom stuff has come off pretty easy just by squeezing it, like you said. And I'm just pulling it out with my uh, fingers here. I've got a lot of, uh, like, this is actually a much different soil than the uh, the soil from the other ones. I think they, they came from different farms, and they got a different soil mix here. This one's got a lot more, like, bark chunks in it. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. How's yours looking? I can't see it. Much like yours. I mean, I've lost most of the soil already. Okay. I just got about an inch up toward the top. So instead of working from the top down, I'm working from the bottom up. Yeah, same here. Jay's crazy obsession says this is cool. Oddball says I've learned more in 20 minutes than all three bonsai books. <laughs> right. <laughs> Haley, you're welcome. I've spent thousands of dollars and several books myself, many workshops, boiling this down into five easy steps. I've got a bonsai book right here. I got this one years and years ago. This one, uh, it's called Growing Bonsai yeah. Practical Encyclopedia. I've seen that. This one came from Borders. You guys remember Borders? You guys ever have those near you? This is just a Northeast bookstore. They went out of business like 10 years ago. That's how long I've had that book sitting around. But you do one of these in an afternoon, and you're going to learn more than reading an entire book for sure. Yep. There's a lot of tips in there, though. It's great when you do something practically, and then you read it as a best practice, and you can understand it. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It gives you confidence. Yeah, you get a little hands-on. You get you get some of the book book knowledge, and it all it all starts to make sense. Now I'm having a little bit of a trouble at the top here. This is very like root bound. Yeah, it's very dense. So I'm uh, I'm just sticking my chopstick, poking it through. I'm not like dragging and like ripping roots. I'm just sort of like loosening loosening up the soil so that it falls out the bottom good it's okay if you do pull and rip some roots okay gently you don't want to go overboard on that but it's okay yeah. and at this stage what some people do i don't include the five easy steps because they would then make it six easy steps but they take it outside and they just wash the roots with the water hose uh okay i could see that being helpful it's Especially not necessary though on a larger tree or a tree that you've wild collected, you want to turn into bonsai, they call that Yamadori. Give it a nice bath to get rid of all the soil. Yeah. This is a, this is a very therapeutic part too. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to rush this. It, it's a, uh, it's fun to sort of just pick through this and, see all of the soil leave and, and 
see all of the roots. Like this is just like a giant mass of roots. Yeah, and feeding the tree. And what you'll notice these larger roots, the larger bore roots, they're good for anchoring but not feeding. It's these fine roots that bring the food. Yeah. Those so, are the the rootlets. The hairs, the little hairs. And what we know what Greg and I know from experience is we're going to cut this. We're going to cut that those roots off. We're not keeping these. We're keeping enough to keep the plant healthy in the pot. So I'm going to go ahead as as we continue to work this really dense stuff out up the top. I'm going to cut some of these roots. It's sort of like uh, combing hair. Sure, Smart. Haley knows a lot about that. <laughs> I'm looking into this root mat and I'm cutting out the larger anchor roots. Haley wants to know more about collecting uh, wild stock. How do you go about that? Well, it's all a matter of taste and preference. I do a little bit of research, know the trees in the area you're going collecting in, figure out what you like as a bonsai, what make, might make a good bonsai. One of my, uh, I guess, discriminatory factors is how large is the leaf? If the plant has a relatively small leaf, it's a candidate. Yeah. Or if it's an evergreen, which typically all have small leaves. So if, if you go someplace and find a plant that's growing um, in very shallow soil, like on a rocky area? Um, that's where you find some excellent mountain type junipers and evergreens that can be very tiny yet 100 years old there's a couple of professionals that do that and sell the trees yeah and i'll say this at this juncture make sure you have the property owner's permission to collect the tree yeah many times the government owns the property bureau of yeah. land management national park service etc national forest and at least out west um they'll, they will sell and issue permits for you to collect yeah, there are a lot of uh, property rights, especially with uh, trees and whatnot. So yeah, you, you definitely do want to be careful. Um, not to discourage you though, because I, I think it's a, a, a totally worthwhile thing to go exploring and, and discover something. Yes, now you're not gonna do this. You're not gonna have a completed bonsai from Yamadori. Okay. You're you're going to do more of a butchering than a styling to get it in a pot and try to bring it to health and then start the process of bones on it. All right. Um, now, another, another way you can do it, uh, this, this takes much, much longer. And it, it's something that I, I want to, I want to, uh, to do soon because I know it takes so long is starting from seed, uh, or starting from seed. Yeah. You there can you go. Like a pine tree, and you can get like little tiny seedlings, right? And only yeah. like a couple inches tall. And you can plant a hundred of them. Yep. Right. And then in five years, you've got little tiny bonsais that are large enough that you can start to style. Not only that, Greg, but you can you can start inexpensively with the primo Japanese stock. Japanese pine, Japanese red pine. Yeah. Yeah. And another thing, Haley, for as far as collecting, many people do what's called urban collecting. This, these plants we're working, which I think are beautiful. This, I dig this. And Greg's tree is amazing. Um, these are shrubs. So if you know somebody that's moving, a business that's going out of business, um, and they've had shrubbery that maybe they don't want anymore. You can sometimes offer to remove that for them for free. Oh my God. Yeah. Like if, if there's a business that's been there for the 20 years and they've got giant junipers. Yeah. Out front. So then you got a Procumbens Nana Juniper with a trunk this big. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like if, if, if a business is going out of business and you walk in and offer them like a hundred bucks cash, they'd be like, yeah, I don't care. <laughs> you save yeah. yourself 20 years. <laughs> More often than not, I've gotten that done for free. Yeah. You mind if I take that? No, go ahead. <laughs> I'll fill in the hole or I'll even plant a new plant back for you. 
All right. You go to Walmart and you buy five dollars azalea. Yeah. I'll take that twenty-five year one off your hands. I've got all of the soil uh, now removed, and you can see how like beautiful those roots are. Take a look at those roots. That is awesome. Healthy plant. So the, the thing that we're looking for here, first and foremost, is the, the tap root, right? Yeah, the tap root is an anchor. It's not really much of the uh, support system of the tree other than holding it in place. So if, if, you feel, if you feel in this root ball, you can start to sort of uh, spread, spread the roots out so that they sort of go off to the sides. And anything, any of the roots that are pointed straight down, those aren't going to fit in our pot. All right, so those those we want to remove, and then the largest woodiest root that you can find just by feeling, that's going to be your tap root, and that's the one that usually grows straight down, but it's 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 always going to get in the way of uh, potting this. All right, here's my second tree. This is what was growing in the same pot. Wow, yeah, that is nice. So that's a bonus right there, my friend. It happens every now and then. Welcome to Bone Yeah, yep. so you thought you were doing one tree, and now you've got two. Yeah, and the other one's looking pretty good, I think. I like that. That's awesome. See, so that's 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 a situation where knowing that that was a second plant that had its own root system paid off for you because instead of you cutting it too quickly and just killing it now you have two two beautiful bonsai plants and we're into the five easy steps of repotting and uh, the labor is done we've removed the soil that was the tough part and I like the word you use, therapeutic. And look where we're at now. Basically, we have a different thing than we started with. We've changed the organism. Yeah, totally. So I'm using my root cutters here, these ones. And I'm identifying, before I like trim any of them down, I'm just identifying the, the biggest tap root and, and removing that because that's just going to get in the way of uh, getting this in a pot. But we do have to re reduce the overall length of a lot of these roots, right? Yeah. How much, how much root mass are we looking to remove? Um, this, is, this is what I will tell you, Greg. Test fit, dry fit into your pot. Yeah. If you can get it into your pot, um, you're almost done now. I would cut the length off a little bit because you don't want them just compacted on each other There you go. There you go Just like giving it a haircut perfectly. Yes manicure haircut. That's what we're doing Giving it a haircut Okay, yeah. so if that fits if that test fits into your pot Let's do it up I'd, I'd rather err on the side of more roots than too few, you know? I'm going to go. i got to grab my scoop. I brought this beautiful bonsai soil and forgot my scoop, my bamboo scoop. You can buy plastic ones, or you can go into the wild and harvest your own bonsai tools. Yeah, that second tree is dramatic because it was all growing in one direction. So that's a good one for like windswept, right? That's like an instant windswept design to that tree. All right. Um, I got to find my pots. Here's our pot. I'm doing a live stream. <laughs> Can I answer your phone or your text? All right. 
So what we're doing here is we've got our training pot and we've got our roots that are cut back. And like Rack said, we're just sort of test fitting this to make sure the roots fit in the pot. And this is actually a slightly larger pot than I actually need. Um, when I bought these online, I didn't realize exactly how big these were, but um, this is gonna be fine for the, the first year uh, of this thing being a bonsai. But what I'll need to do is then the next pot I transfer this to, it'll need to be smaller and uh, not as not as tall for sure. Because this is way, way too big of a, a pot for this size plant. But my roots fit. Okay. Uh, Greg, on my way out, I heard a comment about that second tree being dramatic. Yeah. I actually really like these. I keep some of these in four-inch pots. That's why I didn't want to hurt this one. If anybody wants one of these, yell at me. We'll work something out. It's just a small plant, one band, one major trunk. And if you want to, Greg, if this is something you enjoy doing, you want to do it again, we can work on a tree like this, a single limb mm. tree put some wire on it and bend it up. Really cool effect. Yeah, I like it. I think you should definitely hold on to it. Maybe if this live stream is popular, we'll do that on another one. All right, I've got my pot here, um, and I've got some um, wire here. Do you want to talk through this next step here, preparing this yeah, pot? So the bonsai pot, in order to be a bonsai pot, you got to have large holes for drainage. And I noticed Greg's pot has larger holes. And he, his already have a grid for the drainage. On mine, I had to insert this little screen. So there's a little piece of uh, cross stitch material in there that keeps the substrate, uh, the bonsai soil from going through. Right. And I use that with wire and I, I wired it in and I used pieces of wire that are much longer than needed. So with this leftover wire, uh, what I do is I tie the roots. I twist that like a bread tie down on top of the roots to keep the plant in the container in the loose the the soil that drains very quickly. So I'll set that down in there now. And this is this is part of your composition too. Do you want the tree in the center? I don't. I don't prefer it. I prefer to offset it. So I'll identify. Um, this branch is the major branch it's longer and heavier and then i'll offset the tree in the pot so the trunk is closer to the edge of the minor branch giving yeah. it the weight kind of balancing the placement and then i'll move it a little bit forward in the pot so i'll be on the i'll balance it side to side and then move it a little bit forward and that's just to help the viewer okay once i learn the spot where the trunk's going to be centered noted right there i'll take some bones eye soil and cover the bottom of the pot just a thin layer on the bottom so uh one one thing i'm doing here with the the wire is um i'm getting i'm getting this wire installed you you already had your wire installed i didn't i didn't have my wire installed okay, so I'm sorry. I, I just took a piece of wire and these training pots have uh, these little holes already punched Perfect. on the sides. Perfect. I was able to put the wire through one and then out the other. And then I just, um, I made sure it was off centered off to one side. Cause I know that's where the trunk is, is going to be located. And then I just twisted it into the bottom. So I've got two, two pieces of wire sticking up, um, out, out the top of this pot. And when we, when we position, the plant, we're going to tie down the roots so that it doesn't fall out of the pot, right? Yeah, because this soil isn't like a clay or a topsoil. It's very large and coarse. So it doesn't, the roots don't have anything to hold on to. We need right. to get them out. And we, I guess need to say a note on the bonsai soil again. Again, it's the source of a big argument. Basically, we want something that's well out, aerated and fast draining. So we use. I'll say a general rule of thumb, at least two thirds inorganic material and um, not more than a third of organic material. Now you like to divide into four different things. 
So I'll include a gravel, a sand, a pumice or a lava rock, a clay, a fired clay, and then um, a sphagnum moss or a peat moss. There's some sort of an organic material that will provide moisture retention, not yep. so much nutrients. We're going to provide the nutrients. It's in our care now. Yep. And Haley's asking, what's the difference between bonsai soil and organic potting soil it's just that right like we're adding more inorganics to it allowing it to drain less nutrients less fertilizers in the soil itself um, but more more drainage capacity and so with all that oxygen in there we're doing root development so later on Greg you'll discover that these roots become the composition as they grow large and come out at the bottom of the trunk and spread across the surface of your pot yep so that's, that's why we're doing this very coarse, um, I'm using a bonsai soil here. It's got a gravel, like a, a crushed granite. Yep. It's got um, Japanese fired clay, Akadama, which we use as kitty litter, and little pieces of black lava rock. And I've added some a little bit of peat moss as okay. a material. And the, uh, the mix that I have here is um, I've got uh, very small clay, uh, pebbles. These are like the aquaponics style pebbles. Mm -hmm. And I actually, uh, I used a, a screen and I, I put all of my uh, aquaponics media, like the clay media through that screen. And I screened out all the smallest stuff so that that's what I could use here for my soil. Um, I've also got the, the chicken grit. Um, who knew that chickens eat uh, rocks? Chicken <laughs> grit. It's just, it's probably whatever the, the local mineral is that's easy to, to get. I know you said you had marble chicken grit in your area. Um, mm -hmm. And mine is um, granite. granite. Mine is granite, but you can get it at like Tractor Supply or any place that sells like chicken feed. And uh, it's just very, very fine crushed up rocks. It's also uh, sharp edged, not that it's going to cut you, but these plant roots grow by hydraulics. They'll bore through a large rock, but when they encounter that sharp edged rock, it encourages them to ramify or split. Okay. Go so, in a different direction. Oh uh, yeah. So much good stuff to learn in this bonsai, the deeper you go. So put a light coating of that in the bottom of your pot. Yep. And then you've got the trunk center located. You want to put an extra little portion over the trunk, uh, there where the trunk is going to be, to elevate the trunk just above the uh, pot level. Yep. So I'm, I'm mixing my soil here. The, the one last component that I have to my soil is just like regular potting soil uh, mixed. I, I did mine mixed 50-50 with peat moss. Yeah, good. So it's like three or four ingredients, like you said, only like one-third organic two-thirds inorganic and you just mix that up and so what you said is you've got your your plant and you've got your pot and you want to figure out where where this is going to be positioned and then you want to start to add some soil underneath where the trunk is right yes to lift that lift that section of the the plant up out of the pot because you don't want you don't want the plant you don't want the trunk underneath the lip of the pot. You want it slightly raised above. Right? Yeah, right above the, 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 the top of the pot. That's for the viewer. And you want to make sure your wires come up through your tree, the tree right. root system. You're going to tile. Then once you get your, your plant in there on top of that soil, kind of work it back and forth. Get it in there, a good, good solid connection. Yep. And then you can go ahead and fold those wires on top of each other and just push them together like a bread pie. Yep. And you uh, want that you want that as tight as possible down down yeah. against the roots to make sure that your your tree isn't gonna move around or fall fall out. So a technique using bones up you can do it with your hand, no problem, but take your pliers, your gym pliers or any other pliers and grab and pull and twist all at the same time those wires so you're just pulling and twisting pulling and twisting yep until you've got it nice and tight and right right where you want it yeah i, think I actually need to add more soil to mine 
I've got this. These pots are, are a little bit too big for, for this size plant. The benefit so here for you is a lot more soil than I probably otherwise. It's going to retain water and uh, moisture and humidity better for you. So there's a benefit in there. Yeah. Well, that's good. So this this is the point too where we need to like really make sure that the the tree is located right where we want it because we're we're tying it down. Right. It's not it's not really gonna move a whole lot after after this. No, we don't want it to move a whole lot. Um we're gonna make some minor adjustments as we fill with soil. But we don't want it relocating altogether. Okay. I think mine is in there pretty good. I can just add some soil. So when we go to repot these in a year or two or whenever, mm -hmm. um, we're going to have to locate this, this wire and, and cut it before we can pull the whole thing back out of the pot. Yes. Yeah, that's good to keep in mind for any bonsai. You buy one in the store. If it's in a bonsai pot, the nursery pots, you don't ever usually encounter that. Yeah. If the bonsai pots, you don't want to be pulling on your tree and your roots without cutting some wires first. Right. So that wire is now underneath, underneath the soil. Now, uh, what do we do? What do we do with the rest of the uh, the void here to fill this up? Yeah, go ahead and start filling that up with soil. 